So I was homeless for a couple of years and parked to sleep at a campsite up north of where I am. I pulled in, parked, fed the cats and started to cook and relax. When all of a sudden, flashlights appeared in my face. Four of them, looking in my windows, so I assumed it was rangers asking me to move since the campsite was technically closed. I rolled down my window a bit and asked what was up and apparently it was a family of four, also parked and camping. They had a fire going and a dog, so I figured things were okay here, but there was a, a really weird feeling about it. My boyfriend at the time decided to try and befriend them and we got out to chat and they asked a, a lot of very pointed personal questions. Are you married? Do you live around here? Do you have any kids? But actually it was their two kids asking all the questions. They spoke like adults too, which made me assume maybe trauma was a real part of their life or something. At some point though, the kids put themselves to bed by basically going, Mom, Dad, we're headed to bed. That seemed a bit weird to me, but whatever. But it got way worse from here though. They talked about their converted truck that they lived in. Apparently the kids shared a bed and a key point that they made was the van was soundproof. They really wanted to play with our cats, but no such luck. The husband and wife, I only remember the dude said his name was Scooter, which, really? Scooter of all names? Also, the daughter's name was Olivia and the son Skeeter. I know, it sounds fake, right? But they started to try and separate me and my boyfriend, saying stuff like, let's walk to the river, let's go look at the car, and things like this. They were really interested in hearing about any injuries that we had too. And at some point, they started letting the fire go out and even started sort of standing behind us a lot. Now that was enough for me. We left some stuff behind and we got into the car, started it up and just talked like, what the heck was that? It took two minutes for the woman to walk up to the van and ask if we were leaving. We said no obviously and that we were just cold. She asked to sit in behind us and... I asked why. She didn't answer and asked if she could sit with us or on my lap and again, that was really weird and I asked why. She didn't answer again. She said that we can't leave her there because her husband beats her and so I asked if she wanted the police and she didn't answer, pulled out a cigarette and lit up, leaning against the door of our car and we just sort of looked at each other and it was then that I heard someone douse the fire. It was then that I said, baby, just out of so much nervousness, which is when I found out my boyfriend was suspicious from the beginning and didn't think to say anything until now, only to add that if I had stayed and not followed him to the car, he would have just left me there. He was a waste of space, but before I could process it, I heard the husband grab something off the fire tool set. One thing that I noticed in there was a large red axe, and I just got tunnel vision, and I hit the gas at that. I felt this woman pounce off the side of my van as we pulled away and just as we got on the road, an ambulance was behind us with its lights flashing. I wasn't about to stop for it. You know how easy it is to buy emergency lights for any car on Amazon, right? No thanks. But the ambulance turned off to a dead end road, eventually after a while of demon driving into town that is. We never heard a siren, looked it up and the aforementioned river was two and a half miles into the dense woods, so pretty isolated. Apparently a lot of people go missing out there too, and I often wonder if, perhaps, these guys are to blame. So I was 16 when this happened. I was also working at the place where dreams go to die, Walmart. I obviously hated working there, but... Thankfully, this encounter was the straw that broke the camel's back. Another thing that I should mention too is that I look a few years younger than I actually am. I have a bit of a baby face, so even though I was 16, I looked about 13. It was during the day when the incident happened. It was a pretty slow day, and I'd spent most of my shift wandering around, helping where I could. I was already done with everything in my department. I was in the middle of heading back to my area when a man approached me. It was a bit of a creepy dude, but I didn't want to be rude by not helping him, even though everything in me was telling me to walk away. But creepy guy was asking me to help him find a gift for his niece or something, so 
I asked him if he had any idea what he wanted to get his niece, and he said that he wasn't sure, so I took him to the kids section so that he could choose something. While I was browsing, he started asking for my name, if I lived in the city, how old I was, that sort of thing. I obviously wasn't overly keen on providing this information, so I was pretty vague when answering. Other times I'd completely avoid the question altogether and try to redirect a conversation to his niece. It was evident though that he wasn't interested in discussing his niece, so he provided one-worded answers and went right back to his intrusive questioning. He started asking me more personal stuff too, like if I had a boyfriend, if I'd ever had sex before. Now, I was horrible at communicating when someone crossed a boundary. I hated confrontation and my managers sucked really badly. They'd give me all sorts of trouble for the stupidest things, which made me really anxious whenever I had to talk with them. As a result, I did everything I possibly could to avoid talking with them. Anyway, I asked if there was anything else that he needed. I just wanted to hurry and end this whole interaction. But of course, he told me that he needed a card and a bag to put the gift in. So I begrudgingly directed him to the card section. All the while, he upped the creep factor and began asking me extremely personal questions. He was now giving me compliments too. He'd tell me how beautiful I was, how I had such a great looking butt. Keep in mind, I don't look a day over 13 and he knew my age too. And yet, that didn't seem to stop the creep from making these crude remarks. While he picked out a bag and a card, I kept my distance. But I remember he kept giving me the best that I can equate it to is bedroom eyes. It made me sick to my stomach, but I figured that he'd eventually get everything that he needed and he'd be on his merry way. He eventually got a card and a bag and he asked me to lead him to the till since he didn't know where they were. Obviously he did, but I just sucked it up and directed him to the checkouts. When we got within walking distance of a till, I politely excused myself and felt relieved to finally get rid of him. Unfortunately though, he ran ahead of me and asked for my number, even going as far as making this horrible comment. It was, I like my girls nice and young, they can just keep going and going, you and I will have lots of fun. That made my skin absolutely crawl. I told him that I didn't have a phone, I did of course, and it was sitting in my vest pocket, but he thankfully didn't seem to notice it. I was beyond paranoid though that he'd spot the phone and call me out on my lies. Despite being repeatedly told that I, in fact, did not have a phone, he kept insisting that I give him my number or a social media where he could contact me. It got to the point where I was backing away from him because he'd gotten so close to me, I could even smell his breath. Unsurprisingly, he didn't take the hint and kept inching towards me. I want to know the real punch to the gut though. I had a couple of managers walk past and they definitely saw this guy harassing an underage employee and they did nothing to help. I was getting desperate. No one was coming to my aid which made me feel hopeless on top of it. I thought that I'd never get rid of this guy. But my saving grace was my manager walking through the front door before the creep got handsy with me. My manager was my absolute favorite person. He was pretty intimidating, used to serve in the military. He was a pretty big guy as well, pure muscle, could probably break me in two with one hand if he wanted to, but he was a total gentle giant. Whenever customers got rowdy with the employees, he'd always intervene. It was always hilarious too to see people who were red in the face deflate the moment that they saw him approaching. I spotted my manager though and gave him a look of desperation when he glanced over at me, and I cannot tell you how relieved I felt when I saw him make a beeline for us. He placed himself between me and the creepy dude, slapped on his customer service smile, and asked if he could assist the creep, since I was supposed to be on my break. I happily took the hint and practically ran to the back of the store. I went to the staff room and was shaking from the adrenaline and on the verge of crying. I was in the staff room for about 20 minutes before my manager called me into the office. He asked if I was okay and I said that I was shaken up but fine. He assured me that he'd have me working in the back for the next week, just to ensure that if the creep came back looking for me, he wouldn't be able to find me. 
He then told me that the guy kept asking where I went and what my number was, what my name was, but my manager told him that he couldn't release that information. My manager literally escorted the guy out of the store and watched him drive away before coming back to talk with me. Thankfully, I never did see the guy again. Then again, I left my previous job shortly after this encounter. I got another offer to work with my best friend at her dad's restaurant after I told her what happened, which I happily took. I admit that I was a little sad to leave, mainly because I really did adore my manager. But my hatred for Walmart and my fear of that dude was ultimately what pushed me to leave. About 10 years ago, there was four of us walking through the woods local to us. To get to the best entrance to the woods, you have to walk through a crematorium. There was me, Thomas, Lisa and Alice, and we had planned to go camping in the woods. So, we'd been camping in these woods on many occasions. I had a very easygoing mum, so the parents of the other three would call my mum to ask if we were having a sleepover at my house, and... My mum, being nice, said yes. We were all 13 at the time. We were walking through the woods to get where we normally camped and on the way there we walked past a man with an axe. He didn't speak and just sort of stared us out so we walked on and just sort of brushed it off. A little bit creeped out but didn't think too much of it. The night went on as you would expect, having fun trying to drink and not be sick and just having a laugh with friends. We went into the tent to go to sleep at about 3 in the morning, but about 20 minutes later, we heard what sounded like trees being axed down. The sound echoed around the woods and made us all alert. This went on for about 5 minutes. Then, as soon as it sort of started to finish, Thomas joked about the man with the axe and Alice got rather upset with him. Time passed and just as we were about to go to sleep, we suddenly heard footsteps. They were circling around our tent and we all sat up in shock and started to panic. We heard logs of wood being dropped outside of our tent. We could actually feel the wood as it struck the ground. We all gained the courage to finally look out of the tent, peering out. He was there, sat on the floor, staring into the tent as we opened it. We just all bailed as soon as we saw that and ran as fast as we could from them into the woods. We never did go back to get our stuff or anything, not that we really brought too much, but all of this time, all the times that I've been out there since, I never saw him again. The weird thing too was that this guy, he never seemed to talk. He was just sitting there, staring at us in the tent. Ten years on and I still think about that night and exactly what that guy may have been up to. So a few days back, I went into a mall a bit far from my house and things were really good that day, but then while I was in a KFC branch, someone on Grinder with a blank profile messaged me while waiting for my food on the table, but I shrugged it off and he didn't send me any pictures, just messages saying hi to me and asked if he could give me the best and you can imagine what he said I would ever have. Seeing that I'm in a public place and absolutely do not have the mood to be horny, I did not reply and then proceeded to eat my meal. After eating, I then left the mall while bringing the items that I brought from there and waited for a ride to go home. It was dark, around 8pm at that time, so I had to be vigilant on my surroundings. While looking out on the road, the same guy messages me and asks me where I am currently, and I saw suddenly that his distance from me was only 70 meters away from where I was standing. This was definitely getting a bit worse, so I closed the app immediately and proceeded to continue ignoring him. Around five minutes later, a guy stood beside me though, trying to act sort of unsuspicious I think, even though my gut feelings are telling me that something was wrong. He looked like he was around maybe late 30s, I'm 18 by the way, and a bit bigger than me, both height and weight. I started to get goosebumps while standing beside him and it only got worse when he tapped on my shoulder and asked if he could do those things that he mentioned to me before. 
I froze, having no idea what to do. Well, extremely anxious, but then I suddenly just, well, punched him in the face when he started trying to grab my crotch and tried to unbutton my pants. I then pushed him off of me hard. He was now down on the ground and I ran away as far as I could. But then I saw him chasing me. Luckily, a taxi drove nearby and I rushed inside as quickly as I could. I knew that it was him who was the guy that had been spamming messages on Grinder because his Grinder profile tells me that he's only literally one meter away. I blocked the profile and I logged out of the app after that. But what I realized is that I wasn't logged out at the time, therefore my location was exposed and my profile picture in the app was my face which wasn't covered, meaning that it was easy for me to be identified. Also, the location of the mall is pretty terrible as there isn't a lot of lights around it and it's surrounded by really terrible looking houses and roads too. Worse yet is that there weren't really many people around where I stood at the time and it was pretty dark where we were too, meaning I wasn't really able to identify the man correctly to report him to the local authorities unfortunately, but also it was the perfect place for a crime. This happened to me and my siblings when we were very young, but the memory is still very vivid. This was the most intense paranormal experience that I've had in my life, and I just wanted to get it out there. So, to start, the house that we lived in at the time was definitely haunted. My sister told me much later on that she would hear someone walking up the stairs and then a shadowy figure would stand in a doorway sometimes. I heard the footsteps back then too, but I'd always assumed that it was just her walking around. She didn't tell me until much later, obviously, as she didn't want to scare me. But the house was very creepy at night. I always felt a, a profound sense of being watched whenever I would go past certain spots. It was completely different when I got back home to mum's house. I wasn't afraid of the dark and I would still get up at night to go to the bathroom but it always felt very scary to do so, and I would always hurry as quickly as I could. But anyway, I was 10, my big sister was 13, and my little brother was 8. I begged my older sister to let us play with a Ouija board or keychain toy that she had, because I was fascinated by ghosts and the supernatural. I wasn't really scared of them at all, in fact. I loved them a lot and only thought that they were interesting, I guess you could say. It took a whole lot of convincing, but eventually she agreed to play with the board. So we all sat down in the kitchen table and my sister and I put our fingers on the planchette and asked if anybody was there, to which it almost immediately said yes. We spent some time arguing that the other was definitely moving it and just asking some benign questions I don't really remember. But after a bit, we started getting scared, so we said let's stop. The plunge had immediately and harshly moved to no though, and we instantly pulled our hands back. As soon as we did, we all hear this terrible and horrible screeching or scream, one that did not sound human at all. We each describe it a little bit differently from one another, but we all heard it at once, that was for sure. We ran as fast as we could to the other room, where we all sat sort of huddled on the couch for a long time. Finally, I asked if anybody else had heard that, to which they all just nodded. We stayed that way for hours too, until my dad came home. We didn't tell him about it, and nothing really ever came of it too, but it was terrifying. So terrifying that, to this day, recalling it always gives me chills. Also, for info on the actual sound, it was definitely not a cat. We didn't live near the woods either, we lived right in the middle of the city, so no mountain lion or anything like that too. It didn't sound like an animal call actually, but my brother said that it sort of sounded like the sound of a bunch of bats, but much much louder. The intensity of the sound was part of it, and like someone screaming right inside of the kitchen. To me, it was a lot like a woman's scream, but distorted, like it was more than one voice maybe. To those who just don't want to believe it's anything otherworldly, well, yeah, 
that's totally okay, and I don't know what else to say to you. I'm just telling you my experience. That's totally your choice, and like I said, I'm just telling my story for those who might be interested. So I'm staying at my friend's house in Tennessee over winter break. And tonight I helped her feed the neighbor's dogs because they were out of town. Her house is in a, a somewhat rural area. There's clusters of homes kind of sort of spread out across fields, forests and lake areas. All very beautiful and lots of wildlife. Anyways, it's about 9pm and it's way past sunset. It's quite dark and we're walking the short distance from the neighbor's house back to hers. We're on a road that sort of directly next to us is a small set of woods sloping down into the lake. I'm a little nervous about it so I make a joke like, that forest is kind of creeping me out. Imagine if there's a skinwalker in there. My friend said it's bad luck to share it or say it but I didn't know that until after this event and I'm not taking any chances so... She laughs and gobbles like a turkey loudly into the forest. She's like this and I jokingly say, don't do that, it might attract one. And not even five seconds later, we hear an identical gobble back at us from the forest. It was definitely not an echo too and there was no light in there, no paths and it was very cold, like 30 degrees, so I can't imagine anyone would be out there. But I just remember saying, oh my goodness, then sprinting as fast as I could back to the house. I don't think I've ever run so fast or meaningfully too. I didn't turn back and I was completely out of breath when we got back to the house. My friend thought the whole thing was kind of funny but also freaky. But I just cannot get over the fact that we heard that sound repeated back at us and there's just no way that an animal would make that kind of noise, especially not so accurately. Anyway, does anyone know what this might be? Maybe it was just someone trying to be funny or something? I don't know. I'm really confused by it and it was a, a really freaky situation. When I was a kid in Mexico, we loved to play hide and seek with all the kids in the neighborhood at night. The houses were so close together in fact that you could jump from roof to roof and with everybody sort of knowing each other and being friendly, they wouldn't mind if we did get on the roof. We had my cousins come over for dinner and our parents were just out in the porch talking, having a couple of drinks. Some of the kids... They came over and asked if we wanted to play. It was already dark out and this is when we especially liked to play so we agreed. And there was this one girl too that I had a thing for at the time and they also happened to join that night and I knew that if I could get her alone I might have a chance to kiss her. I knew that she liked me too so it would work out. We all gathered in the middle of the street and we randomly chose who would count then all the other kids would run and hide. So as the kids started counting, I looked at the girl waving at her to come follow me. Holding my hand, I led her to my aunt's house, which was vacant at the time. She was on vacation and I knew the house was empty. I didn't see any other kids go in there. The front door was locked, so we ran to the back and checked if it was locked too. And it was, but at the back of the house, my aunt had an old washing machine that I knew that we could get on the roof from there. I helped her up first and... When we got up, we could hear someone coming and I told her to go and hide and she ran off. I was able to make it on the roof not long after and I knew for sure that somebody was searching the house next to my aunt's. It was having the second story redone and I hid in a sort of half completed bathroom. I thought that I was alone too but at some point I felt someone grab my hand. It was pitch black in there, I couldn't see who it was but I heard a soft voice whisper, it's just me, don't worry. It was most definitely her, so she squeezed my hand a little bit more. We hid for some time, and it was great. But then, from afar, we could all hear the kids saying, we give up, and we had won the round. I came out of the bathroom and looked down at the street where all the other kids were. And that was when I saw her, clear as day, looking at me. I froze. If she was down there, then whose hand was I holding? 
Slowly turning my head, I could still feel the grip of whoever's hand I was holding with it, still being dark, and all I could manage to see was the faint outline of someone with, like, glowing sort of red eyes looking right in my face. When I say glowing, I don't mean, like, fully glowing, but they look sort of a bit red. At that, I absolutely panicked. I got down from the roof and I jumped down to where the kids were, and they were all pointing up and behind me, asking me who that was. They could see the outline of someone up there too, and also what looked like red eyes. We stopped playing immediately and went inside one of the other kids' houses. We talked about what we saw, but only briefly before going back outside again. But when we did, whoever was there was now gone. So this is the most wild and crazy thing that I've ever experienced and I know that it sounds absolutely insane but I just have to tell someone and I really would like to try and find some answers for whatever the heck this was. So when I was 20 years old I was driving past Parker, Arizona when my boyfriend accidentally took a wrong turn. We quickly realized something was wrong too because as soon as we turned that corner it was like everything just went dark. Like there was absolutely no sun anywhere. Keep in mind, it was about 1 or 2 p.m. in the spring. There's no mountains anywhere or large trees or anything. Nothing that could cast like a massive shadow or anything. It was clear blue skies and then all of a sudden it was just pitch black. No buildings or noises, just blank emptiness. We turned the headlights on in fact because it was that dark when... All of a sudden, there was a, a big white sign on the side of what I believe was a road. On the side, it said, in big letters, They're here. Turn around. Now. We both looked at each other and we just said, Yeah, to heck with that. And we quickly turned around. After a while, we found the freeway again and it was honestly like the sun just came back on. We went home and... We decided that we would just probably never speak about it to anyone because it was just so weird. But to be honest, I've been haunted by this experience, this really weird and creepy thing that happened to us my whole life and still to this day I just have no idea what to think about it. I'm a 22 year old female now and I still get goosebumps thinking about the situation and whether or not I would even be here today had I not been such an untrusting child. So I used to ride my bike around my neighborhood and through the local parks a lot when I was younger, being a generally safe area at the time, not so much now but I digress, my parents felt comfortable with me riding my bike alone as long as I stayed nearby. And one summer afternoon when I was 10 years old or so, I can't be certain as it was a long time ago but it was around 9 or 10, I decided to ride my bike through the park near my elementary school. I ended up running into a friend and her mum at the playground there and spent a bit of time with them before they left. Looking back, I don't recall noticing anyone lingering nearby but I was an oblivious kid having fun at the park so they very well could have been but I just didn't see them. Anyway, I wasn't really having much fun at the park by myself, so I decided to get back on my bike. It was then, though, that a man, maybe late 30s or 40s, approached me pretty much out of nowhere. I was sitting on my bike, kickstand still down, when he came up to me and asked me what my name was. I was a very shy kid, so I don't think that I said anything in response, but he didn't seem to care. He told me that I was a, a very pretty little girl and that... He had a daughter my age that I could come play with. In addition to being extremely shy, my parents had also taught me about the whole stranger danger thing so I wasn't about to go with this man. After I shook my head at him, I remember him smiling at me in the most unnerving way before putting his hand on my shoulder. I felt uncomfortable the whole encounter but it wasn't until this moment that I really felt afraid. I quickly kicked the kickstand up and pedaled away as fast as I could manage. I didn't bother looking back until I made it onto the streets just outside of the park. 
he thankfully hadn't followed me, but I still felt scared, so I went home. I never told my parents or anybody else about this encounter. I know that I probably should have, but for some reason my kid brain thought that I would get in trouble and not be allowed to ride my bike anymore, so I decided to just forget about it. Looking back now, it makes me feel nauseous to think about what might have happened to me had I gone with that man or hesitated to pedal away. I'm very thankful that my parents had been serious about teaching me not to talk to or go out with strangers. I'm maybe even a bit thankful for my social anxiety as, honestly, it probably saved my skin that day. So I think that this all started with the nightmares. I've had a history in the past with ghosts and ghouls. A ghost attached itself to my brother when we were younger and would angrily throw things at him. We named her Cadence. My sister said Cadence would play hide and seek with her, showing up in the corner of her eye only to duck out of view when my sister would turn to look at her. And when I moved out at 16, Cadence didn't follow me. And this, whatever I'm dealing with, is something different, more negative. It started earlier this week, like I said, with the nightmares. The first one was about Kisaragi Station. If you don't know what it is, you can look it up, but I encountered many people at the station, and when I got on, I arrived at a giant field with a dog. I don't really remember much after that. I also don't remember the second nightmare. The third, however, was yesterday night. In it, I was being chased through a small portal under some stairs. Writing this now, I'm realizing that my last apartment had a staircase with a giant hole under it too. My cat ran under there once and I felt nearly feral with primal fear that gripped me when I got close to that hole, but anyway, in the nightmare, the person chasing me was a cannibal. I don't know how I knew, but I just knew it in the dream and we eventually came to a standoff. I was really close to her, but just out of her sight and... She was sort of looking away, but all she had to do was turn and she would see me. And she did. She turned slowly, eyes wide as she stared at me. I stared back in complete terror. She saw me and reached out to me, grabbing my hand harshly. And I woke up, slowly, filled with chest-crunching terror. I could still feel the woman's grip on my hand as I woke up, in fact, nearly crushing my fingers. For context, I sleep curled up every night, sometimes on my back, but never with my hand anywhere near the edge of my full-sized bed. But I woke up with my hand dangling off the side of my bed, reaching out. I suddenly felt eyes on me from the closet and stared. With complete certainty, the only thought that I had was demon. Spooked like heck, I stayed awake and considered asking my Catholic roommate to bless my room, or at least the apartment. Silly, right? But my roommate had done it before and it was all fine. That is, until my cat broke their Mary statue. After the statue broke, that was when the smell started, like something had rotted in our apartment. My roommate's senior cat started getting nervous too. She used to never meow, but she meows constantly now, and one time, we even heard her on the other side of the apartment while we were checking the mail, and we just heard her screeching like crazy. Confused, we rushed back over to our apartment on the other floor and opened our apartment door to find the cat staring at the door and practically howling at it. This morning, we also found a huge blood stain on my roommate's pillow. Frowning, I checked her cat over because we thought maybe the cat had bled on it, but she was spotless. My roommate shrugged it off and eventually we just washed the blood stains off. But that was definitely really weird. Anyway, what do you guys think? Is this a demon? Can anyone give me some guidance on how to handle this? I feel like I'm going crazy over all of this and... I'd really like some help. When I was a kid, for a long time, my family and I lived in an apartment building in Chicago. In this building, we experienced 
well, many weird things that felt sort of evil, I guess. One of the experiences that I had, I wanted to share with all of you. So, to get into this apartment building, you sort of had to enter through a gate. After entering the gate, you would just follow the cemented path with what uh, would probably take maybe five seconds to get to some stairs. Going up the stairs, you would see windows to the first floor apartment straight ahead. Looking to the right, there would be a door that would allow you to enter the apartment complex. And now, entering through this door would take you to an extremely small room with two doors. The door to the left would take you to the first floor apartment. The door to the right would take you to the apartment where I lived, the second floor. As you entered through the door to the right, it would lead to an almost spiral staircase. After reaching the top of the stairs, you would yet again reach another door which would actually take you fully inside the second floor apartment. Opening the door, you would immediately see the living room. So one afternoon, I was home alone watching anime in the living room. I was maybe 15 when this happened and I remember hearing someone open up the first door to get into the building and the second door to get into the second floor apartment. I began to hear someone walk up the stairs. At this time of day I was under the assumption that either my mum was done with work or my brother was done with wrestling practice getting home which I was excited to not be home by myself. As the footsteps get closer to the door I glanced at the bottom of the door which I then saw a shadow there. Usually at this moment I would hear keys as someone would be preparing to unlock the door. But in this incident, I didn't. I just saw a, a shadow under the door. I also started to hear like a slow scratching sound starting from the top of the door to the bottom. I honestly thought that my brother was being an idiot, playing a prank on me, so I just let it be and continued watching TV. As I was watching TV, I noticed the scratching continued on the door, getting more and more intense, and the shadow of someone was still present under the door. At this point, I was getting pretty annoyed too, because I was like, dude, I'm trying to watch TV, quit playing games with me. So, I got up from the couch and went to the door, and I smashed it open. But as I sort of swung it open, I looked around, and I didn't see my mum or my brother or anyone. So then I thought, this idiot is behind the door. So I checked behind the door and no one was there either. I did check the back of the door though and I did see scratch marks on my door. At this, my heart started racing and I ran down the stairs and ran out of my apartment, called my brother up and he was still at wrestling and my mum was still out too. So then, the question is, who the heck was scratching at my door like that? So I was 8 in 1994 and living in Staten Island. Back then I would walk to the store by myself. My parents didn't really watch me and sometimes would even ask me to buy them cigarettes. And one time I was walking and an old like 70s brown Buick was following me slowly. Then close to the store, he pulled up next to me and was trying to get me to help him with something. I was a pretty smart kid who could take care of herself, probably from being left alone so often. So I knew that this was really shady. I ran a few blocks until I got to the store and went inside. And a few minutes later, he walks in and is following me through the aisles. I quickly thought to tell the clerk, but I didn't trust him either. I'd already had a lot of bad things happen to me at this point in my life and didn't really trust anyone. So then I thought to use the payphone and call my parents collect. So that's what I did and really loudly said that I don't feel safe and someone's following me. The dude ran out of the store so quickly after that. My dad picked me up and he spent the rest of the day looking for this car and... I didn't get the license plate, so we never found him. But I think about this a lot because it's not like he gave up after that too. I'm sure that he must have found a victim eventually and to me, that's perhaps the most heartbreaking thing about this. Is that I couldn't stop that. So last night, I was skiing and camping out of my RV in an unofficial secret spot. High in the Sierra Nevadas of California, 
The location was right next to one of the most imposing peaks of the area, at the base of which was a frozen lake and resort closed for the season. Sparse trees surrounded the lake and a sort of pillowy fog hung over the icy expanse at dawn and dusk. Obscured by banks of snow from the adjacent highway, plow drivers had only bothered to clear a small portion of the road into this resort. It was the perfect place to hide out for a few nights. As soon as I tucked into bed, I started to hear the strange noises again though. This time, they wouldn't stop. From the absolute darkness and the otherwise total silence of a blanket of snow, I swore that I could hear something moving. Not human footsteps, but it sounded like, I don't know, two snow shovels piercing the ground. Quietly but quickly it traveled. Through my open windows, I suddenly felt an intense feeling of being watched as well. Whatever this was, it came from towards the lake, a path which is covered in three feet of powder. The noises got louder until it was right up to the side of my window. Terrified and afraid to even make a sound, I lay in my bed watching and listening. Only a thin bug screen separated me from this creature in the pitch darkness. On a night without even a breath of wind to cause the sensation, I felt my RV pitch from side to side all of a sudden. It had climbed to the top and, as it clambered about, I heard the now familiar noise of the night's frozen dew cracking under its weight. I could hear the ice fragments shed off the edges of my home and burst upon hitting the ground. I say familiar too because I had heard these noises before. On the first night, ice had also fallen with the sound of footsteps and the shaking of the RV. Thinking that it was a person up to no good, I charged outside with a flashlight and a knife after all, the paranormal usually has a logical explanation, right? Examining the site carefully, though, there wasn't so much as a, a new print in the snow. Satisfied and with the noises gone, I slept unperturbed for the rest of the night. The second night, my brother slept in the room and I heard the ice crack again, but no more. Neither compared to this third night. Judging from the amount the RV rocked as the entity moved... It was lightweight, I would guess, and agile. It was clever enough to completely stop moving as a car from the highway approached as well, long before lights would dimly illuminate the campsite even. It watched me, even when it seemed to stop. It seemed to climb down from the roof. I could hear its snow shovel feet crunch into the ground as it began to sort of pace around my camper, I would guess. The creature alternated from roof and sides, and it was then that I realized that... It was looking for a way in. Breaking free from my petrification, I gently rolled over in bed and shut the two windows next to my head, covering them with the blinds. It noticed. I immediately heard the shoveling retreat, but it didn't leave altogether. Straining my ears, I could tell that it was pacing about maybe 30 yards away. Even though there was no wind, what sounded like a metal sign sort of clanging against a tree persisted. I tiptoed to my knife and clutched it against me and eventually I fell into a, a fitful sleep like that. I had a pleasant dream about my grandparents that night. At the end, it changed though. I was on the couch of the camper and from a roof vent above me a, a dark ooze draped into my space. Gathering my courage, I unsheathed my knife and thrust at the shape with a shout. To my surprise, I was still in bed. My knife was sheathed and I just stabbed a guitar, I think. Still, it was too topically relevant of a dream and I wanted to stay and sleep, but I also didn't want to be around whatever this was anymore. I brandished my knife and headlamp, bursting out of my door... My light whipped wildly about, looking for any evidence of this creature that had visited. But there was nothing. No footsteps, no roof ice, nothing on the ground. No metal sign attached to any tree for clanging. There was literally nothing. And so, it was at this point that I jumped into the driver's seat and I just got out of there. I slept at a nearby populated campsite until dawn and not a single noise, even with the window wide open. So, what was that thing? What did it want? Or am I just going crazy? Surely there must be an explanation for what I just experienced, but I don't know. 
I'm not so sure, to be honest. As I share this, my mind keeps going back to the dream of the darkness oozing in through the ceiling. Since I slept in the populated campsite without incident, I believe that it's gone. I keep a Nazar amulet watching my bed for these kinds of uh, superstitious reasons, I guess. It might sound silly, but I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't afraid to go to bed tonight. So my parents got divorced when I was 12 and my mum moved us into a small town in the Pennsylvania mountains. After a few months of living there, I went back to live with my dad in Texas. Ever since then though, I've heard these voices of people that I know calling me into the woods. It's been almost 8 years now and it's only when I'm alone but not every time too that I'm alone. And it seems to only happen here in Texas. It's weird, but I never even considered that it was maybe something to be concerned about, until recently, I guess. It was just something that happened. I even followed the voice once, and only thought that it was kind of weird that I had heard my dad screaming for me if he didn't actually call me because I got home later and asked him about it. I don't know if this is related to or not, but remembering that it was what sparked this post... Uh, a few years ago, I was about a mile out into the woods in Pennsylvania when I zoned out for a minute. When I zoned in, I heard a, a stick snap and I looked over to see a, a white-tailed doe staring at me from about maybe 10 feet away and it sort of looked almost as if it had been trying to sneak closer to me when I looked at it. I just sort of backed away from it and went down the mountain, but as I was backing away, it, it looked at me with a a sentience that, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I'm not entirely sure what to make of any of this now, but I am looking back on all the times that I just sort of brushed it off as normal and now rethinking things. But what do you guys think? Should I follow the voices? So my whole life, I think that I've known that my house is haunted by something, but it's always just been pretty mild stuff. But this past year, things have escalated a lot and it's starting to get concerning. I have no clue what this thing is or how to get rid of it to be honest, so I'm going to give you guys a lot of things that it can do and hopefully one of you will know how to get rid of it. For context, we built my house on a lot that previously had a crack house on it and we moved in when I was five. Also important to know is that my room is at the end of a carpeted hallway with my parents' room directly across from it. Now, probably a year or so after we moved in, I started hearing footsteps on the carpet leading up the hallway to my room. When they got to the door, they would stop and restart at the end of the hall. There was extremely squeaky hardwood right before the carpet, so I would have heard it if it was my parents or siblings. My siblings... They slept in the basement and would have had to have crossed the hardwood to get to the hallway. When I was probably around seven, I also saw a pale face outside of my bedroom window that ducked out of view when I saw it. I've always constantly felt watched too and I feel like if I don't watch my back, something's about to get me. I'm 19 now and still can't shake that feeling but... I find my belongings in my room in different spots when I left them and some fairly large things have entirely disappeared. This doesn't happen to me outside of that room though, which is weird, but things have fallen off of my wall, fallen over, etc. on their own and on occasion, also a loud clap noise precedes stuff moving. I've seen it twice, but both times as a, a sort of shadow figure one time sprinting directly at me in my backyard, disappearing about four feet from me, and another time crossing my house into the hallway my room is in. The second time too, my dog was looking up at it and following it into the hallway even. One time, it turned on our vacuum that was in a closet and not plugged in. It took me about three minutes to figure out where it was coming from, and when I opened the door to the closet, it immediately turned off. About 20 minutes later, it turned on again, this time only lasting about 30 seconds. But the weird thing is that there aren't any outlets in that closet at all, and 
I've tried to turn it on without plugging it in, just in case that was a feature that I didn't know about, but it obviously didn't work. This one also may not be as compelling, I know, but TikTok and Snapchat filters they rely on detecting a face will often detect one in the hallway, or one time going into my room even. I was sleeping in my parents' room recently too, and they were out of town, and they have a, a nicer bed, and I heard rapid footsteps that walked right up next to me faster than I could react to open my eyes, and when I did, nothing was there. This one is strange too, because it's the first time that I've heard the footsteps since I was like 11, and I haven't heard them since. One time, I also fell asleep on the phone with someone, and in the morning, she told me that she heard a little girl whispering in the microphone while I was asleep. She said that when she asked if the whispering was me, she heard a woman screaming into the mic, and at which point, she just hung up. I'm also not sure if this one is related, but my older sister, 25 years old, said that she saw the hat man in our last house. She was 10 and 11 years old when we lived there, and... My dog sometimes would growl and bark at something that no one could see and I don't know if that's enough information about it but I'd very much like to know if anybody can tell me what this is and what the heck I should do about it because like I said it's escalated dramatically in the last year and it's starting to scare me. This happened probably around 14 years ago when I was 17. I was in university in California. I graduated high school early, so started at university early as well. And I used to go to a local Starbucks by my campus in my free time to study because it was hard for me to focus at home. I remember this older guy used to come in a lot too and just sit alone at a table, always facing me with one small coffee, and he would always just stare at me. It made me really uncomfortable, but I was too young to think about reporting it because I didn't think there was anything to report, to be honest. I mean, he was just staring, not approaching me or anything. In fact, I thought some of it was just in my head, to be honest. But I began to notice that sometimes he would leave around the same time that I did. With this Starbucks, the parking was mostly on the level ground of a free parking structure that was around the corner from the shop, and... It was usually super easy to get a spot right in front, so you could actually see your car from the street in the structure. I usually parked there, and I never felt particularly unsafe, except when I would realize that he was following me out. I began to note what his car looked like and where he would park. It would usually be a little ways away from me, and I would wait for him to leave before I went anywhere because I didn't want him to follow me or anything. One afternoon, though... I was heading to my car and I noticed that he had parked right next to me. The passenger side of the car was by my driver's side and it was very close. I didn't see him but I remember just having the most awful feeling in the pit of my stomach when I realized that he had parked so close. I rushed to get into my car and it was at that moment that I shut the door that I realized that he was following me and approaching the driver's side of my vehicle. He had gotten as far as the door when I quickly locked it, and thankfully I did it fast enough because he tried to open my door a second later. No words, mind you, no trying to get my attention or anything. He literally just yanked on the door handle as aggressively as he could. I immediately backed out of the spot and floored it out of the structure. I got caught at a red light outside the structure though, which gave this guy enough time to catch up to me in his car. I honestly don't know why I didn't call the cops at this point, but I remember trying to rationalize what was going on in my head and thinking that maybe I was making a big deal out of nothing, even though the man had literally just tried to open my car door aggressively like that. I know it's stupid, but I was 17. If it were me now at 31, you bet your bottom dollar, I would have driven straight to the nearest police station. Thankfully though, I was aware enough that I needed to lose him before I went home, so... I turned into a series of residential streets to see if he would follow me. He did. I just sped up and made a bunch of random turns until I was sure that I had lost him. Then, finally, I drove home and never went back to that Starbucks ever again. This happened a few months back. 
I, a 37-year-old male, currently move back in with my senior parents. My parents have lived in the same neighborhood for almost 35 years now. It's quite nice and upscale and the houses don't go up for sale often, so I've known all the neighbors for years. Recently though, the house directly next door was sold from grandmother to grandson, so since it's been vacant a little while, the cleanup began this summer and skipped to the end of summer. My mother and I are outside on the porch smoking and the grandmother next door had just up and started doing some landscaping in the front yard alone. We exchanged hellos and she went digging in the flowers I think. About 10 minutes later though, a disheveled looking tall skinny lady starts strolling through the neighborhood with luggage and a backpack. Now this might be normal where you live but it was not in this neighborhood. We are not really on the beaten path anywhere. Like you would need a reason to go into my area. It's not a shortcut anywhere or anything like that. And anyway, immediately everybody was uneasy. Her actions and behavior just made my gut scream crazy or high as a kite on hard drugs or something. She passed our porch and goes straight to the edge of the neighbor's yard and starts talking loudly. I keyed up starting to ready myself. Then she approached closer to my neighbor, continued talking, then backed up to the edge of the yard. She continues talking loudly and then repeats the same behavior, only this time she gets closer. Then back to the street a third time, even closer again. I'm a pretty big guy and am heavily tattooed, so I'm fairly intimidating looking. And I know it, although I'm a big teddy bear to be honest, but I get up and walk to the end of the porch for a better look and... This crazy chick goes in for a fourth time and got right next to my neighbor at this point and she looked scared like my neighbor looked really scared. So I got up and yelled at the lady after taking off my shirt and I was just like hey can I help you do you need something if not you should keep moving. No lie I think she totally didn't realize that other people are outside in close proximity but at that she absolutely took off. She quickly vanished and it was obvious that she was up to something. Thankfully, we haven't seen her since then or anything like it again. So I, a 23-year-old female, have been living at my house since I was born. Seven years back, we constructed a new outhouse with minimal furniture, which is probably about 20 meters away from the main home. Since construction, I've used the outhouse more than any of my other family members to study and attend online lectures to avoid getting distracted. But ever since 2021, I've witnessed subtle oddities, I guess you could say, during my time there. For instance, on January of 2021, the wall clock suddenly stopped at around 4.20. My mum and I changed the batteries and it started working, so no big deal. But the next day it stopped at about 4 again. So I bought a new clock with new batteries and hung it on the wall. It worked well for a couple of days but it stopped working again. Frustrated we bought one more clock, inserted new batteries, worked for a couple of days again and it stopped again at 4.10. All three stopped clocks are still in this house and we gave up and since 2021 there have been no working clocks in the house. It almost feels like I don't know, time doesn't exist when I enter this house to do my tasks. Whereas the clocks in the main house work as usual, there's no issues here at all. Although we found it strange, my family didn't think much about the incident and went ahead with our life. I mean, it's just a few clocks after all. I did do some googling to find the spiritual meaning behind stopping clocks though, especially around 4 after what I'm about to tell you, but nothing turned out. So anyway... I moved away from my house to pursue higher studies in a different city. I didn't experience any weird things there and returned on August of 2022. I started using the outhouse again for studying and preparing for my exams. As I finished my task for the day, I went ahead to turn off the lights and suddenly I felt a, a slight tap on my upper arm. I completely lost my balance and hit myself against the wall. But again, I thought to myself, it must have just been me being clumsy or drowsy or something, and went back to the main house to sleep. But the incident that happened two days ago drove me to share this with you guys. 
so I finished studying at around 8pm at night, like I usually do. I turned off the lights and just before I stepped outside the door to lock it, I felt someone or something whisper in my ear. Although I didn't see anything visually, it sounded sort of like gibberish and whatever it was, it whooshed past me. I even felt a waft across my face like air was being moved and at that, I rushed outside, locked the door and I went back to my main house to sleep. I didn't discuss the incident with my family members because I would definitely get laughed at, said that it was all in my head. But I don't understand what I've been experiencing here. Is this what a haunting is? Should I be more aware of spiritual stuff like this or am I just overthinking it all? Or what do you guys think? So this was very recent, six days ago to be exact. For some context too, I've struggled with seeing and hearing things that are not real since I was a kid and have had help over the years for it. Now, I'm a huge fan of hiking or just simply taking walks in the woods. The only time that I go alone is when I'm in the woods that I live near. This day though, I wasn't. I was with my friend Lars in a walk about three hours from my house. We were planning on traveling around and staying at motels in the meantime and that day we decided to take a walk in a popular area for people who like to walk in the woods like me. The catch was that these woods were huge. Which wasn't really a problem for us though because we liked it. In fact, we were thrilled. But there wasn't really much to it though, I mean... It was pretty, we escaped the crowd, but every now and then we would see someone walking by. There really wasn't much to it in the end though, I mean, it was pretty, we escaped the crowd, but every now and then we would see someone walking by. We walked for a while until we got to this spot, not too different from the rest, except for one thing, nobody else was around in this section all of a sudden. That's why me and Lars took this turn, the other turn had a few people there. And after a while of walking down this path, we spotted a man. A naked man. We gave each other a look and sort of turned around. The man was slightly off the path, bent over and looking at something. As me and Lars were walking back, talking about the strange man, I heard a voice behind me. I turned to see the man. He was talking to us about the bug that he picked up. I got a good look at him at this point. He was pretty tall, nothing crazy, but bald with a few brown hairs beginning to grow, but like I said, completely naked. I flashed the man a, a brief smile and I sped up, so as not to disturb him, I guess. We got out of that place as fast as we could, and once we got to the car, we just kind of laughed it off. I mean, yes, it was creepy, but more weirdly funny, I guess you could say. The car ride was nothing, so skip to the motel. As we're checking in at the motel, we see the same man walk in. He was a little harder to recognize considering the fact that he now had clothes on and all that, just torn up clothes, but he waited behind us in line. Good thing we were almost done too, checking in, because as soon as we did, we went right to our room and locked it without a second thought. This was definitely creepy, I mean, was he following us or... Was it just a coincidence? We both decided that we weren't going to stay at this hotel for more than a night. Heck, I wouldn't have stayed even one night if Lars weren't there telling me that it was okay. That night though, Lars wanted to go outside for a cigarette at one point. I don't smoke, but no way was I going to stay in this room alone. I followed him outside and we chatted for a bit. After a few minutes, I see the guy walk out of the door... Lars put out his cigarette and began to walk inside, but before we got in, the guy pulled out what was probably a knife or something else sharp. It was dark, so I couldn't really see, but it was something sharp, and started carving through his sleeve and right at his arm. I saw liquid, or what I thought was liquid, trickling to the ground and immediately knew that this was probably blood. I rushed into the lobby and Lars got the idea and followed and we alerted the staff but by the time that they got someone to come out, he was gone. To this day, 
I still have so many questions about that time. Did he follow us? Why the heck was he naked? Why was he doing that to himself in the first place? I guess I'll probably never really know the answers, but honestly, I'm still spooked by all of this. I don't know what I'll do if I ever see him again, but man, I sure do hope that that never happens. So nearly a year ago, on Christmas, I was at my dad's with some of my siblings. We celebrated Christmas and then after dinner, my dad headed off to be with his girlfriend at her apartment. Left in the house were my 16-year-old uncle, my 16-year-old brother, me who was 15, and the youngest who was a toddler. I woke up early in the next morning and it was the day after Christmas. I sat on the floor beside an outlet on my tablet. Everybody else was still sleeping and then I heard a banging on the back door. I thought it was my dad coming back, but the banging got louder and went on for too long. For lack of a better term, I think I disassociated, didn't know really what to do and couldn't move until I heard the back door break all of a sudden. I had been paranoid about home invasions due to our area in the city before, but I had no idea what to do and just sort of stood there in shock. I put down my tablet and picked up a nearby flashlight. I think to throw at whoever broke in, I guess, but when the back door had given out, I heard him go quickly through the downstairs, stomp up the stairs, and then he was right outside of the door of the room that I was in. The man opened the door, turned left, and then turned right, where he saw me sitting on the floor, beside the outlet, less than three feet away from him. He was taller than my dad, and wore completely black and a ski mask as well. He held a big, rustyish crowbar that had a blue handle. He was wide and looked on the older side. I took a small breath and screamed louder than I ever have, and I held it for at least 20 seconds. Once I screamed, he screamed a bit too, and then ran downstairs and out of the house. I went to the top of the staircase, after he was already down them obviously, and out the hallway, and I yelled, please leave, as loud as I could. Looking back on this... Asking a house invader to leave is pretty useless, I know, because he already was leaving and also because, I mean, he broke in, right? But I just wasn't thinking straight. My screaming, though, woke up my uncle and my older brother. I wasn't wearing pants, so I put on pants quicker than I ever had while telling my older brother what had just happened as he was half awake and confused. I ran downstairs and my uncle had just come from his room in the basement. I quickly told him someone had broken in and left after I screamed. He already had a knife and told me to grab one too. I did and after making sure the robber had left the house and checking quickly on the toddler who was somehow still sleeping, we relaxed a bit. My uncle told me to guard the back door and stab anyone who comes through while he checked the area outside the neighborhood to see if the robber was gone or where he went. I held the knife and stood beside the broken back door knowing that if someone came back I couldn't really do anything as... I never really fought before and, I mean, really I was just a kid holding a kitchen knife. So, I just held the knife in hopes that they wouldn't come back and, thankfully, they didn't. My uncle came back and said that they must have had a driver since there was no way that he could get away that fast on foot. None of us had phones so my older brother called my dad over Instagram on a tablet to tell him what happened. We explained what happened and... When dad was 10 minutes away via car, he hung up. While we all sat and waited for my dad, we talked and realized that this was likely all planned. The invader came when there was no car in the driveway, and after entering, he ran directly upstairs, ignoring the new Christmas presents, an alcohol collection, and even two gaming consoles smack dab in the middle of the living room that he had just run through. He went directly for my dad's room where me and my older brother were, my dad collects valuable shoes and has some expensive watches that he keeps in his closet and only someone friends with my dad who had been in the house before could have known that. In any case, when my dad came back, he asked me over and over about how the intruder looked and I just told him again and again while he and my uncle tried to think of which friend it could have been. I was the only one who saw the guy and had been less than three feet away from me. I was in direct physical danger from some stranger that... I think that I'd never met. 
We didn't actually call the cops in the end as the police in our area and city are known for being more than unhelpful. But as Christmas was getting closer again, I was worried about being back there around the same time the person broke in. I've had a harder time sleeping and I've been more and more paranoid. I understand I was and am very lucky that I wasn't hurt and all we got was a broken back door in the end, but I still honestly hate the person who broke in. And I sure hope that whoever he is, that he gets caught soon. So I live in northeast New Mexico and we're known to be a, a skinwalker hotspot. But I've always heard the stories and just joked about it really. But lately, I just don't know anymore. You see, I've been hearing sounds of like howling, heavy breathing and yipping out of my window. But when I look, there's never anything there. This has been going on for several months now and it was never any bother to me until recently, I guess. You see, a couple of days ago, I heard the sounds inside of my house, along with footsteps. I immediately thought that it was an intruder, obviously, so I grabbed my SIG and started making a sweep of the house. I checked every room, but I didn't find anything. My house is single story and there's a, a small crawl space above the ceiling, but the only way to get into it is an attic door that I keep locked at all times. It could have been a small animal, I think, but it sounded like it was at least 150 pounds. Animals near my house have different behavior than in Texas, the only other state that I've lived in too, so obviously it's a different environment and all that, but I used to see animals standing still in front of my ring doorbell, just looking at it for like several minutes. It's been about two months since this last happened, but when it did happen, it was around twice a month, I would guess. In other instances, I've had squirrels climb on the sills and look through my windows. This happens near weekly, and just the other day I saw a hummingbird just sort of chilling in front of my window for about 30 seconds. I do have two dogs, Snoop and Riley. I started to keep them inside because they would start barking at random stuff in the dark, and it would spook the cows and wake us up. But I was hanging out with a friend and we were on a walk after sitting for several hours watching TV. It's fairly dark outside, probably about 9 or 10 p.m. I would guess. And he wanted to see my deer blind as we're both into hunting. We walked out there and talked for a bit before starting our walk back. But about a third of the trip back, we started hearing my dogs barking, owls hooting and the horses acting weird. It all started at the same time as well and ended at the same time. A little while later, there was what I can only describe as rustling in the grass about 40 feet in front of us. Both me and my buddy noticed it. It looked pretty large, about the size of a bear, and only the back of it was exposed, but it was dark, and the weirdest thing is that it was almost hairless. I started to back away slowly, and it stopped moving for a second before just scurrying off into the woods. It didn't have a tail, whatever it was, and obviously I didn't get a real good look at its head, but its body was, I don't know, kind of like a dog's, I would guess. In any case, we made it back to the house and talked for a bit before he started his drive home. But what do you guys think? Is this a skinwalker, or is this some other animal that I'm just not aware of? If so, what can I do to get rid of this thing? It's not good for the livestock for sure and it's scaring them a lot. And to be frank, it scares me a lot too. As a student in the late 90s, I was asked to take part in the last UK university's pistol shooting competition at Bisley Camp, home of Britain's largest competitive shooting complex. I wasn't keen on it as... The Dunblane Massacre had put a grim slant on things and pistols were about to be permanently banned too. But with peer pressure, I agreed to go along. A minibus would take the team up. We'd have the competition. We'd have the competition, come home and go to the pub for a laugh. The night before the competition, I had a crystal clear dream of a white Ford Capri and a horrible accident. A row of four orange leafed trees, a broken axle... A Scottish woman with a small black dog asking if I was alright. 
I woke up that morning to be told that our minibus booking had fallen through and some guy called Luke would drive the four of us. I didn't know the guy, had never met him, never heard of him in fact, knew nothing about him or his car and had never been to Bisley. Luke was just a friend of a, a team member doing us a favor, yet he was wearing the red jacket, black jeans and blue baseball cap of the person that I'd seen in my dream. When he turned up at our halls of residence in a white two-door Ford Capri, both I and the friend that I told about the dream essentially went pale and refused to get into the car. Guys, you're being ridiculous. I had it serviced last month. It's old, but it's fine. Uh, nah, man. The front axle of that car is... What? The axle's fine. Ticked off because we were late. He gets in and throws the car up and down the driveway, jamming on the brakes, and then shouts, See? Get in. We're late. The day goes fine. Competition ends. All in high spirits. Get in the car, and idiot Luke decides to speed up the main road out of the camp. Just as I yell stop, I'm getting out. There's an almighty pop, followed by screeching as the car veers left into a row of four orange-leafed trees and comes to a halt. Lots of panicked shouting and cursing, and... We get out and, yep, sure as day, the axle has snapped. A crowd gathers due to the noise. As I'm standing there freaked out by all of this, a, a small woman that I somehow recognize walks up and, yep, asks me if I'm alright. She had a Scottish accent and is walking a small black terrier. When the double A turns up, he tells us that if this had happened at speed on the motorway, there's a good chance that we would all be dead. We eventually got home via some ridiculous series of buses and I sat eating in silence in the dining hall with my friend, both of us too messed up to say anything. I described the whole thing to him that morning and for several weeks afterwards, he became quite distant, as though he mentally connected me with death itself or something. About a decade later, he caught up with me and the event came up in conversation. He found it much harder to talk about but... His comment has always struck me, I guess. He said that what I told him and what occurred that morning had forced him to see life in a, a very different way. Essentially, he'd had to face up to the possibility that there was more to this life than he was willing to consider, and that it frightened him. He'd even had a, a few nightmares about it over the ensuing years, as he said the sheer size of it all and what it meant has always scared me since then. I'm in my 40s now and I find myself thinking about it every so often. I still, well over 20 years later, I find it very hard to describe what I truly feel. I just know that this life and this death are, are far larger than we can ever comprehend. But to finish it all, a couple of years ago I had to sit in the back seat of my brother's two-door car on a quick journey. For the first time in my life, I had what I now know as a panic attack and it was clearly linked to what I've just described. It was horrific, and I'll never sit in one of those ever again. Even thinking about it makes me slightly nauseous again. This stuff is buried very deep in our consciences. So last week, I was cleaning the house and forgot that I had to pick up some beers for the house. I checked the time and it was about 6pm. I figured that I had a little time but looked out the window and it was already dark. I figured that I would just head over to the nearest gas station and get back as quick as possible. It really shouldn't be an issue, I thought. So I start walking and I noticed someone walking in front of me. I thought nothing of it and continued walking, but after a couple of blocks I saw one of the stray cats that I feed regularly, so I stopped and pet him for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes. I get up and continue walking, but I then notice as I turn the corner that the man had stopped and seemed to be waiting for me to finish. I put my hood up and walked past, gripping the knife in my jacket pocket. I hear him behind me getting louder and louder as I started to speed walk. As I finally get to the gas station, I kind of take a breath and go to the ATM, checking behind me every so often, completely forgetting about the beer at this point. As I finish up, I turn around and he is running down the aisle at me. I round the corner and he nearly knocks over a shelf trying to get to me. 
Another gentleman notices and helps me to keep an eye on him and offers to even walk me home. I get all my things and wait for him to leave before I purchase my things and start walking back. Me and the kind gentleman start heading back and making small talk while keeping eyes on the guy in front of us. The gentleman says his goodbyes as his house was closer and said, Do you have eyes on him? And I say yes and continue walking home. As I get a little closer to my house, I notice though that he dips off to the side of the road. I start walking a bit faster as I turn the corner to my house, and that was when I see him again behind me. I quickly run into my house, locking both locks on my door, and then I see him, basically breathing on my window. I was home, completely alone, and I was terrified for hours. I don't know if he left at some point, because... I never did check again, but I stayed awake that night with the phone by my side, ready to call 911. So I'll start off by saying that I've always been open-minded, so has my friend and her partner. We've all had our little strange or odd encounters over the years, and sometimes came up with the logical explanation or Left it to the unknown, I guess. But we have never had something like this happen before. Well, the car part, anyway. So, this happened a couple of hours ago. Me and my friend and her partner were downstairs about to watch a film. Their young son, four years old, was upstairs fast asleep. The stairs are in the front room where we were sat. And their four-week-old daughter was in the Moses basket by the sofa. We had turned off the lights, shut the curtains, and got comfortable. There was a small bang upstairs, so my friend's partner went to check their son. All fine. But as the partner walked down the stairs, he heard almost like a wind chime jingle from their bedroom and said out loud, like, Huh, that's weird. But put it down to a possible draft somewhere or something. Not even five minutes later, we get comfy, go to watch the film, and me and my friend notice car lights outside rather bright so we take a peek it's their car full beams on for about 10 to 15 seconds and then off again and we all looked at each other dumbfounded then again a bit longer this time then the indicators flashed a few times then stopped and as it stopped their son screamed like not even a second passed and he started screaming and crying to the point that he was so wound up that he was nearly sick. Of course, as soon as he screamed, the dad ran straight up as my best friend was breastfeeding. The dad brought him down and he was inconsolable. And being only four, he couldn't exactly say much, just sort of some broken words. Then, the TV went off with no warning. Then a bang upstairs and then silence. We spoke for a good hour or so trying to decipher what the heck just happened, but the car keys were in the other room, nowhere near any living animal or human. When we approached the car, me and my friend's partner, we checked if it was locked, and it was. We looked in the car manual and had a Google search, and nothing comes up regarding the full beams just staying on and then intermittent hazard lights going off. There was no alarm as well, which was really strange, and definitely nobody around. But since then, their son won't settle. Their little girl keeps waking randomly and crying, and they've heard a couple of more bangs. I've never experienced car lights being set on or off like that before. Usually an electrical fault would happen when the vehicle is on, or you would have a, a warning light, but nothing. It's a newish car as well, so quite full of tech, and to be honest been checked out and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. I have had a few experiences myself but usually with lights in the home, candles, noises etc but nothing to this level. Also the first feeling that I had was sickness and dread. I've not had gut feelings like this regarding the paranormal for many years now but I genuinely felt unwelcome and I dare say almost watched too. Twenty-two years ago, I lived in a house on a lake. 
I rented a room from a lady that lived in the other room. I had been living with a good friend but moved out and needed a new place. My parents actually found the listing in the newspaper and set me up with it. So, aside from a, a strange living condition of living in a, a two-bedroom bungalow with a complete stranger in the middle of nowhere, it seemed like it was actually going to be pretty nice. My new housemate had a large dog that actually kind of freaked me out a bit. However, she ended up being a super sweet dog. My housemate was never home too. Between work, her friends, and her boyfriend, I saw her like all of three days out of three months that I lived at the house. So, in the end, I practically took care of the dog. The thing about this dog though is that she would hide under my housemate's bed until she was hungry or needed to go outside. And never having had dogs, I didn't really know any better. The first month wasn't anything to write home about. I got some awesome photos of the moon over the lake. Somewhere in this time frame, I started recognizing the facts above. I also started getting a weird vibe in the house, I guess. In fact, if I wasn't in my room, I wanted to be in there pretty much only. I also only felt safe during the day. I use that term because the feeling at night was the same as if you think something bad is about to happen. The problem was is that you just couldn't quantify it. But at some point I started hearing knocking noises randomly in the ceiling near the kitchen. I figured that it was just birds because there's a lot around. One afternoon though I decided to check out the attic crawl space located above the kitchen cabinets. It was a wooden door with a single lock or latch on it and a fixed handle. I'd eaten lunch and climbed up there to check it out, opened the door and didn't feel threatened or anything. I peeked my head in and looked left and right over the bedrooms, basic attic, nothing special. I closed the door and climbed down. But from that moment on, something definitely changed. The dog came out of the kitchen and just sort of stared at me, like didn't even move, not an inch. It honestly made me very uneasy. I tried the tricks of outside, treat, play, but she just didn't move. So, in the end, I just sort of went to my room and shut the door. In the weeks that followed, the events became more and more unnerving as well. I began to stop being able to sleep. I turned to leaving music on overnight. Very low volume, but it was on nevertheless. As time passed, I got to where I felt like someone was standing in the corner of my room. But one evening, the alarm or clock radio in the living room, it also turned on by itself. At first, I didn't even know it was there to be honest because I never went in there. Nothing in there was mine. Next, over the last two months, it had never gone off. But I asked my housemate when I saw her next about that and she denied setting it. She was also visibly confused as to why it would go off like that. But I began to feel as though I was being watched in every room. I felt as though the thing in my room was always there. I began to wake from sleep for no reason. I began grinding my teeth at night as well. I moved to sleeping with a black light on, the lowest light level that I could get in the room. Music became CDs that would repeat indefinitely. And now I would wake up, look around, and see nothing and then try to go back to sleep. My housemate and a friend were at the house one evening too, and the friend claimed to be a psychic. And she looked dead at me and asked me how I was sleeping. I hadn't seen the housemate in weeks and hadn't told her about my problems. She then tells me that there's apparently an old man in my room and that he doesn't like me. I asked if there was anything that I could do and she said no. I began addressing this man though, trying to fix things in a desperate attempt to get more sleep and asking him to leave me alone, but life got much worse. I would be on the phone with my now wife and would fall asleep and she would tell me years later that there were really strange sounds that scared her. She said that she would stay on the phone to ensure that nothing happened to me. I began to have regular nightmares every time that I closed my eyes. My work started to suffer. I was exhausted. It was around this time too that 
I began to see a dark cloud like mist that appeared to pour out of the cinder wall. With the lights on, mind you, in the corner of the room the man had been reported standing in. I would walk over and touch the area, but there was never anything there. I would go back to bed and see it still happening. But my wife was getting ready one morning and while putting on makeup, she also said that she told me that the face just wasn't hers. She left the bathroom and she never went back in. That night we were both asleep. She had become accustomed to my nightmares at this point. I had a dream that she and I were in my car driving down the road. It was nice. I look at her and then back at the road in time to see three children in the road. The next sequence happened so fast I had no time to react. Each hit the windshield and sort of a bit zombie-like. I immediately awoke, obviously. I was sweating, shaking, and scared. My wife was instantly awake also. She asked what happened, and I relayed the story above. And her face lost color. She looked very concerned. Thinking it was the content of the dream, I apologized. But she sat silent, long enough to make me wonder if something was wrong with me. She eventually broke the silence and said that just before you woke me, I dreamed that we had just gotten into your car. We left and the next day I found somewhere else to stay. We moved to another state and the first night in the new place, I slept non-stop, perfectly. I woke up rested and recognized like the silence in my head, if that makes sense. And after getting out, I'm more convinced than ever that there is something going on with that house at the lake. In July of 2019, I was leaving a co-worker or a friend's house on a 4th of July party. It was about 10.45pm. It was me, a 36-year-old female, my husband, 54-year-old male, and our then 9-year-old daughter. It was in a town about 45 minutes drive from home. Mostly down country roads that I didn't know, so I was using my GPS. Now, this area of town basically rolls up the streets, so to speak, at 5. So the roads were mostly deserted, with only a few cars passing every now and then. And absolutely no cars in front of or behind us. When all of a sudden, this very dark vehicle, I think it was a, a Hunter Green or maybe a Dark Grey, pulls up behind us and starts to tailgate my car. I don't normally speed more than 5 to 6 miles per hour over the speed limit, so someone tailgating me is not really unusual, I suppose. The longest stretch of this two-lane road before being able to hit the highway was a sort of winding tree-lined road. There was this big curve in the road, almost a hairpin turn that was not as sharp. So you could almost see a mile in the distance from where you entered that section of the road to where you came out of it. And there were no turnoffs, no shoulders to stop on, nothing. Just road and trees. When I entered the huge curve, the car was still right on my tail. Not flashing, not weaving, not using the horn or anything, just still following right on my tail. So, all of a sudden, I look in the rearview mirror and the headlights from the car that was tailgating me were gone. I didn't see any parking or marker lights. I didn't see any tail lights. I looked back as far as I could see and I couldn't see that car anywhere. I mentioned this to my husband and he started looking around behind us and didn't see them anymore. They were just gone. Again, there was just nowhere at all to stop and turn around or turn off or anything. I quickly turned my attention to the directions on my GPS and forgot about that car though. And about a half a mile after the huge curve in the road, there was a stop sign where I had to take a left onto the road that leads to the highway and closer to civilization. When I stopped at the stop sign, there were no cars coming or going in either direction. But just as I was about to hit the gas and make my left turn, there was a, a knock near my back driver's side window. I looked on my side mirror but didn't see anything. I heard another knocking sound, close to the same spot, but more on the middle of the car and not quite on the window now. My husband started turning to look back and I asked my daughter if she saw anything, but neither of them did. So I said, oh well, guess we're just hearing things. And I made the left hand turn and kept on going. But, 
As I made my left turn, I glanced back at the entrance to that road one more time, and there were a pair of headlights lighting up the road right where my car had just sat, and two people, I was too far away to make out details, were returning to the dark colored vehicle that I had seen before. Now, I can't say this for sure, but I'm almost positive that had I opened my window or door to find the source of the knocking, something horrible would have happened to my family and myself that night. I've recently moved to Weed, California. It's a small town next to Mount Shasta for work. I'm an avid hiker and love exploring, so naturally, two days ago, I decided to go hike the mountain on one of my days off. Not entirely sure why, but I decided to drive my car very deep into the forest surrounding the base of the mountain, as far as the dirt road would take me anyway. It was around 3pm with a clear sky, so I was pretty confident and enjoying the scenery as I got out of my car and started my hike, heading closer to the mountain. At first, it was your regular everyday hike, lots of birds and squirrels around, that smell of nature that fills your lungs as you walk across the terrain... It really wasn't until I reached a small dried up river that I noticed that something was just off. As I stopped to look at the dried up river and take pictures, I noticed that it was strangely very, very quiet. No birds chirping, no signs of squirrels or any other animals, and even the sound of the wind that you would hear when you're on a mountain seemed to be completely gone. At the time, I thought it was just an odd coincidence and started walking up alongside the river, but as I kept walking and being able to only hear my own footsteps, I couldn't shake that feeling that I was being watched. Not the kind of feeling that makes you think someone is outside your window watching you. The kind of feeling that makes you feel multiple people or things are observing your every movement, studying you. I've never had that kind of feeling in my life, but what happened after made me completely forget about that feeling. I suddenly started to hear something out of nowhere that sounded like, the only way I can describe it is, angelic humming or maybe a, a song with no lyrics. But it also sounded strangely electric, like the sound telephone lines make. It wasn't very loud, but enough to make me look into the direction that it was coming from. I looked to the other side of the dried up river that had multiple trees and other foliage to see someone or something looking straight at me. It almost looked like a ghost with it looking completely white, but this thing was very clearly there. It almost looked like it was wearing a, a robe, I want to say, but I couldn't see any feet, hands, or even a face. Although it had an oval head, that's for sure. However, I could feel it looking straight at me, almost as if it was trying to remember my every detail or something. And even from that far away, I could tell that its entire body had a, a very weird texture. Almost like porcelain, but if porcelain was a, a silky fabric, it was very obviously not human, whatever it was. I was very understandably in complete shock and terror, frozen in place, kind of scared. We both looked at each other for what felt like forever, but it was most likely around 20 or 30 seconds. I very, very slowly started walking backwards. I don't think I got more than two steps when it sort of tilted its head, as if it was curious or even surprised at what I was doing. All the while, I could still hear that electric angelic humming, and I could have sworn too that it got a little bit louder when I took those steps back. When I turned my head to look behind me to make sure the way was clear so that I could run, the song suddenly just stopped abruptly without warning this shocked me and when i turned back to look at the thing it was gone no sign of it anywhere well as soon as i saw that it disappeared i ran as fast as i could following the path that i took back even after it had disappeared and while i was running i could still feel like i was being watched from all sides I almost tripped a few times due to how fast I was going, but when I got back to my car, sounds of animals and the mountain wind suddenly came back, but I was still scared out of my mind and drove as fast as I could away from that mountain. 
I've never had anything paranormal happen to me in the past, and I've honestly always been very skeptical of stuff like this. But this experience has left me questioning a lot of things. I don't think that I want to go back to that mountain. I've even had a nightmare about the experience, and I'm not even sure what I saw or, to be honest, what to call it. So I, a 27-year-old female, went backpacking alone over the recent long weekend, which was 10 out of 10 beautiful. The second night, I camped at a beautiful high elevation lake, which could also be accessed by a short sort of one-mile trail, so there were a few other campers and several people who were just day hiking or fishing. It was late afternoon and I was sitting around my camp reading when a guy, maybe mid-twenties, walked by carrying a fishing pole and a small cooler. I didn't think much of it, but maybe five or ten minutes later, he doubled back and came and said hi. I said hi and went back to reading, but then without warning, he then sat down on a stump next to me. I was completely taken aback at this invasion of my space. He started asking me questions that were really just statements, but in a sort of creepy amused tone, like, so you're just reading sort of thing, and then looked behind me and noticed my tent and said, Oh, you're staying the night here alone, huh? I didn't say anything in response to this in particular, but it was pretty obvious that I am. It's hard to explain, but his vibe was just really off. I was so uncomfortable that I couldn't even really form words or tell him that I was trying to be alone to get him to leave. I was honestly paralyzed. His eyes were so dead and dark and just drilling into me, I just responded with like a huzz or yap or something to that effect and just tried to pretend that I was still reading. Without warning too, he pulls out and cracks a beer and lights a cigarette and just starts blowing it at me. At this point, I'm so uncomfortable that I just stop responding. Soon, another hiker wandered by and strikes up a conversation with this guy and I took the opportunity to grab my water filter and bladder and pretend to need to get some water. I went to the shore and filtered some water, super slowly, and saw him walk away to go sit with this new guy, which made me super relieved. Except that he kept looking in my direction. I came back eventually and got inside my tent, and for 20 minutes everything was fine. I had the rain fly pulled back and was watching the sunset and loosely organizing my things when he sort of popped out from behind my tent and stood maybe one foot from my door just looking down at me. He didn't say anything, but just started laughing really creepily, sort of fakely again. I asked, what? And his response was, this is just really funny. I felt literally sick to my stomach and finally responded with something like, I'm taking a nap now, so have a good night. He laughed again, but luckily left. Later, I saw him still wandering around the camp with no real purpose still looking in my direction often. I had no service, but I wrote down his last name, at least what was written on his cooler, and where he said that he was from while talking to other hikers in my notes app, just in case, and I slept with my pocket knife close as well. I debated leaving camp that night, but ended up staying and just leaving super early in the morning in case he came back. Now, Normally, while backpacking, I think the worst thing that could happen is I might run into a bear or sprain an ankle or something, and, and maybe this seems not that terrible as you're listening to it, but this truly was the most unsettling experience I've ever had in the backcountry. I don't know what this guy's deal was, but there was something really off about him. I'm sure that I'll be back out soon, but hopefully somewhere far away from that guy. This event happened last week. I was heading to my apartment after seeing a friend. I took the tramway at 11.30pm because I didn't feel comfortable walking at night. And as soon as I sat, a man who was already sitting nearby came and sat in front of me. I got a very strange feeling about this guy, so... I told my boyfriend by chat what was going on. Then I stood up to get out of the tram, but the man quickly got out after me. 
he was weirdly following me, not walking behind me, but sort of next to me. I was getting really anxious knowing something was wrong, so I continued to walk to the avenue that I live in. I crossed the road and he didn't, so I thought that I was okay, but a few seconds after he crossed the road too and was walking behind me again. Then he passed me and was walking in front of me, so I thought that I was just getting paranoid and that he was just walking this way too. But near my building, he stopped and waited until I sort of came up to him. He asked me if I had a boyfriend and all I answered was, yes, sorry, good evening, as polite as I could. He proceeded to leave in front of me, so I was walking slower for him to be far enough away from me and to make sure that he didn't know that I was almost home. I turned into the little pathway heading to the lobby of my building, but obviously I was still anxious about this guy, even though he continued to walk. I thought that I had put my keys in my pocket, but they were in my bag, so I was sort of shaking so much that I tried multiple times to grab them, but just couldn't find them. Eventually, though, I did manage to get them out, and I opened the magnetic door, but thought of closing the door immediately after me in case the guy wanted to follow me. The door was closed, but the magnetic system wasn't on yet, and the man suddenly was running towards it and pushed it violently with horrific eyes looking at me. The door is made of glass, so I saw him, and that's when I knew that I was in real trouble. So without even thinking, I screamed as loudly as I could, and I think that's actually what saved my life in the end. Immediately, the guy ran at me, pushed me hard on the ground, and started to choke me really hard. I was too stunned because I wasn't prepared for such a violent assault. While he was choking me, I couldn't scream at all or even breathe, and... Nobody was coming, so I honestly thought that I was about to die, looking at his bulging eyes staring directly into mine with just pure hate. I am pretty small as well, so I wasn't really able to do anything with my arms at all. I think it wasn't that long, but it felt like a long time, and eventually I lost consciousness for a moment. When I opened my eyes again, he just ran out, and I saw the caretaker's wife beside me. The caretaker was chasing after this guy but didn't manage to get him. He came back and called the police and thankfully they caught this guy within 10 minutes thanks to our description. I really still don't know why he did that to me as well because when he attacked me he didn't sexually assault me or rob me or anything like that which would have been really easy to do at that point. I can't understand that his only goal was what seemed like to kill me. I'll forever be thankful enough to my caretaker who came to help me and probably saved my life because nobody else in the building called the police or even tried to help. The man was before a judge about three days later and is in jail now but denied everything even if me and the caretaker identified him and that there was even video proof of him following me and everything. I am thankful to be alive after all of this, but it's something that has definitely affected me for the worse. So, I'm really not exactly sure what this was, but it sure as heck wasn't the wind or a pipe making noise. This was something that tried to scare me and my partner at the time and something that physically presented itself and physically pulled on our clothing and hair. So, this all started when I put together a sofa bed in the spare room at our home. My partner was at work, so after building it, I had nothing better to do than play some games. Our cat was staring down the hallway into the spare room. Not exactly unusual, but after some weird behavior from the cat, I thought that I'd have a look. What I can only describe as a black silhouette appeared and vanished within a few seconds. This wasn't actually that scary to be honest, more just surprising I suppose. But a few nights later, me and my partner both sat up after waking up in the dead of the night, as if we were waiting for something. It was as if the walls of the house were screaming a silent warning, just this eerie sense of anticipation for something dreadful. And all of a sudden, a very heavy dragging and clawing of the floor, very slowly, made its way down the hall and toward the bedroom. I was pulled up under the covers. This couldn't have been anything such as a household noise, 
There was just no way, and the cat was with us on the bed, so it definitely wasn't the cat. We sat there listening, and nothing ever came around the corner into our bedroom, but the sound seemed to stop just outside of the door. Over the next few weeks, strange things would happen too. As previously mentioned, our hair would be pulled, quick steps would make its way into the kitchen where we were and would come to a halt, as if something would be in the doorway just staring. We would return to the kitchen with every drawer and cupboard open. The big wide mirror in the bedroom would have handprints upside down on the top half of it. The last thing that happened was weeks after the last odd occurrence though. I would sometimes stay up worrying about my partner. This was because they had breathing issues, heart issues, etc. Their breathing would slow down until it entirely stopped, but before a massive breath would be taken and the loop would start up again. As I sat listening and as the breathing slowed to almost a stop, a heavy deep exhale came from behind me, almost horse-like. I later found out that my partner had the same thing happen twice to them and was too worried to tell me. The whole series of events isn't the first paranormal thing to happen to either of us, but sure as heck it's definitely the strangest. Whatever it was though, it felt sinister and thankfully it seemed to go away. The visitors would witness too many of the things mentioned and some things smaller not mentioned as well, and I thought that I would give my experience to this community after hearing so many interesting stories here. I did try to get a, a recording of it once, in the dead of the night, to which my cat jumped at me, nearly giving me a heart attack, but thanks for listening, and thankfully, for now, it seems to be over, but if anything does happen again, I would really love to hear what your thoughts are, and what you think I should do about it next time. Thanks. So I'm from Australia and when I was 8 years old, my family lived in a house off the Pacific Highway. It backed off to bushland and had a, quite a large backyard I suppose, but I used to play outside all the time because of this. One day I was outside as usual as well and heard my mum call my name so I ran inside to see what she wanted, hoping that it was lunchtime. When I got there she was busy washing up and she said, where are you off to in a hurry? She had been watching me from the kitchen window, which overlooked the backyard. I said, you called me in. She said that she hadn't called me in though, and that I must have imagined it. I just thought that she was messing with me at first, and said, come on mum, why'd you call on me? She stopped what she was doing, and looked down at me and said, sweetie, I didn't call you. Maybe you just heard the neighbors yelling, and it sounded like me. But I was adamant that it was her. It sounded exactly the same as the hundreds of other times that she called me. I started to get a little bit grumpy at this and said that it was definitely her, but she told me to go back playing and that lunch would be ready soon. This is when I started to cry and demand that she stop messing with me. Suddenly I had her attention and she asked why I was so sure that it was her. I told her the reasoning that it sounded exactly like her. She eventually comforted me and convinced me that it must have just been my imagination. The next week went by as normal as well until one night I awoke to a tapping or a scratching noise. I looked around and when my eyes adjusted to the light I couldn't see anything in my room so I just assumed that it was an animal in the walls or the roof. Possums quite commonly come into the house for warmth and to nest in Australia so I tried to get back to sleep. It went on though for what felt like maybe half an hour so I looked around again and listened closely to the noise and that was when I saw something in my peripherals at my window. I gazed over and saw what to this day still gives me chills. It was a thin figure about two inches wide. It had elongated arms and fingers all black and white eyes. It was tapping on my window while staring at me. I stared at it for a moment, not believing what I was seeing, thinking that I must just be dreaming or something. But for some reason, I just felt like it was toying with me, like it was saying, I'm coming to get you. Fear took over at that point. I stuffed my hand under the blankets, and I screamed as loudly as I could for my mum. I didn't stop screaming as well and didn't hear my mum come in, and when she grabbed the blanket to see what was wrong, I jumped back thinking that whatever the heck was outside, my window had somehow got in. 
She asked me in a frantic sort of way what was wrong. I pointed over to the window and said that, but it was gone and she asked me what it was. I explained what I had saw, slowly as I was trembling and could barely get the words out to describe it. She said that I could come and sleep in her room. I didn't get any sleep that night, nor the next few nights afterwards. I can still see the image in my mind as well as clear as the night that it happened 18 years ago. It has made me afraid of the dark and to this day I still sleep with the lights or the TV on. I've tried to rationalize it, I've tried to find answers in paranormal sightings, folklore or dreamtime stories here. I thought I actually found the answer about five years ago when I learned about Mimi spirits. They resembled what I saw at first until I read it and it discussed with elders that they're sort of small and shy and are in no way harmful. Apparently they look after the land and don't like interacting with other beings so... Obviously, I crossed that off the list as a possibility, and to this day, I still have no idea what it was, but I have a feeling that it was the thing that called my name that time, mimicking my mother's voice. It's obviously made me think that it's much like a skinwalker. However, we really don't have any tales of those in Australia. The closest thing to that here is the Bunyip, a shapeshifter that lives in billabongs and attacks passing travellers. And well, there's just no bodies of water nearby, so I also crossed that off. Obviously, I thought that maybe it was all in my head, that my mother was right and it was just my imagination. Yet still, the image is so strongly imprinted in my mind, as is the voice. To be completely honest though, I still have no idea if it was real or if it was something trying to lure me away or what it was. What I do know though is that... I will remember it until the day that I die. Some friends and I had gone camping up a canyon in Utah. This was in 2020. Some creepy stuff had happened earlier in the night before I made it to the campground. So we were trying to relax, wind down and have some fun like we had planned. We were in high school at this point so... We were doing stupid games like truth or dare and whatnot. It was me, four friends, and our friend's dog. Now, there was only one other group somewhat close to us, a couple and their dog, who set up their tent a few yards away from us. But they weren't close enough to interact with us at all. My friends and I were staying up and talking, laughing, etc. When at some point, it sounded like someone's car alarm went off, maybe five or ten miles up the canyon. The next campsite was pretty far away from ours. We didn't really question the sound and just went about talking until we noticed that the sound had gotten noticeably closer. It happened gradually, so we didn't notice it until it sounded like it was maybe even just a few yards away. The noisier that we were, the closer that it seemed to be getting to us. As we whispered amongst ourselves about what could be making the sound... It came closer and closer, and finally the noise was literally just outside of our tent, mere inches away from us. None of us dared speak or even move an inch in fear of compromising our safety. When we became quiet, so did the noise. After we were dead silent for a few minutes, the noise started up again and began to once again grow further away, until it sounded like maybe it was 10 miles away again. This happened in the span of like 10 or 20 seconds, mind you. But as the night went on, we would hear the noise travel around from campsite to campsite in almost no time at all. It didn't go away as well until about 3am, and we tried to stay pretty quiet for the rest of the night. Now, whatever made this sound traveled the span of roughly 5 to 10 miles in the span of like 5 to 10 minutes. Now, that's a whole mile per minute. It wasn't a vehicle because there were no engine sounds with it and no headlights. It wasn't human because there was not a single footstep or twig crunch or anything, even when it was right outside of our tent. It made zero noise aside from just the beeping. It didn't sound like any animal any of us knew about. And it traveled way too fast and was much too loud to be any animal. Also, 
Some other important details were that we originally thought the sound was either a vehicle or a machine of some kind because of the consistent pattern of the beeping. However, when we stopped to listen to it for a while, there was a, a brief moment when the pattern got slightly off tempo, but it sounded sort of accidental, I guess, and quickly got back on the beat afterwards. This led us to believe that something was imitating the sound of a machine or a vehicle. We considered everything from nocturnal birds to pranksters with an air horn, but nothing really added up. We ended up waking up the next morning at 5 o'clock to just pack up and we left. The other campers who were sleeping a few yards away from us, but they were already completely gone by the time that we were getting up. And this leads us to believe that whatever was messing with us that night had messed with them pretty bad too. I wish we could have seen our friend's dog's reaction to what happened, but he had already fallen asleep by 8 or 9 p.m. long before the beeping started. It started around like 11 or 12 at night. But I recently got together with those same friends that I camped with back then and I brought up what happened that night. One of my friends too said that when the rest of us fell asleep, the same thing had happened again, but instead of a car alarm, the sound was a baby crying apparently, traveling at the same speed and distance as before. And according to her, it circled our tent a few times before fading off again. But the people camping closest to us definitely didn't have a baby as well. Of course, I'm not 100% about this detail because I don't remember her telling us about it up until last week and the experience happened like two years ago, so it may have been misremembered or something like that, but then again, I definitely was asleep when it supposedly happened. I do remember that much. Oh, and uh, another notable detail too is that we were less than 50 miles away from Skinwalker Ranch. And if you know anything about that place, then you'll know that it is a really weird area. This happened to me last year when I was home alone. My two older brothers are always out in our local church, which is pretty near to us. It's like one street away. At this day, we had no electricity, it was daytime, we couldn't pay our bill on time or something like that, so I was home alone and I'll admit that I'm really not into church, like my brothers are anyway, because I'm just too lazy when it comes to religions and things that need me to go out and talk to people. I would always choose to be home alone, back then anyway. So yeah, I was home alone, no electricity, just using my phone, drawing stuff on my sketchbook, music, etc. My brother went home and he went straight to the bedroom, no word or anything at all. But it wasn't very fast, he walked like he would normally with a, a normal face. So after a couple of hours, it was almost getting to night time. We do have some candles, but I couldn't find them, so I asked my brother, who was still not out of his bedroom. He came out quickly and went outside the house after he told me to follow him and fix the electricity. I was like, well, what? What's your plan? And he asked me to get the screwdriver and pliers. He taught me how to put the electricity back on when it's cut off. He told me to cut this hanging thing. It was a lock for this electricity meter or something. It's a circle shaped thing that's attached to a wall in every house that has electricity. He told me to remove the seal after the lock and pulled out the whole cover. This revealed a plastic chip that was in between this metal that is supposed to be in contact with the cover. I just removed it so I removed that chip too and put back the cover and the lights came on. I was like, oh wow, that's it? That was easy. My brother went straight back to his bedroom again. Then I received a call on my phone. Hey, uh, we're going to spend the night here. You should come here. We got the electricity going and food here as well. My brother said. He was the one who was speaking. It was definitely his voice. I know my brother's voice. This voice is the one who just helped me fix our electricity though. I told him, where are you? And he told me that he was still at the church. I said, stop, you're obviously joking. You're so lame. And I wanted to go into his bedroom just to throw a pillow at him, but I realized I'm not even hearing any voice from his bedroom while I was talking to him, which was really weird. He was talking normal. He was not being quiet. And I mean, really, I should be able to hear him inside, but 
there was no voice at all. I stood there sort of dumbfounded. I couldn't run and suddenly my legs turned really weak. I didn't even want to make any sound at all, so I slowly as a snail grabbed my pants and really slowly walked outside while looking in every single corner that I could see. I began tearing up. My lips were shaking while I was thinking, if this is a prank, then man, this is a really good one. But as I found out later, it wasn't. It wasn't a prank at all. I arrived at the church trembling, even cried worse when I saw both my brothers. They'd never seen me cry like that before. I'm not even the crying type, really. But when I spoke to them, they confirmed that they had been at the church all afternoon. This is definitely one of the most weird, traumatic, and spooky experiences that I've ever had. And when I think about it, I've been with someone that I'm sure was not human. Whoever that was, it was not my brother. And I talked to him. I followed his orders to fix our electricity. I followed a, a non-human's command. So this happened to me when I was around 9 or 12 years old. I'm over 30 now and I must have told this story over a hundred times. I've even shared it on the internet once or twice too, but haven't really got any comments, so I thought that I would share it here. Now, my family owned a pizza shop that was the first floor of this building. The second floor of the building is where my family lived. It was my stepfather, my mother, older brother, older sister, myself, and my younger brother. But the only way to get to the second floor was a staircase outside the building in the back parking lot. You would exit the back door of the pizza shop, walk 15 feet to your right, and walk up the staircase to get into the apartment where my family lived. Note too that we had a staircase in the house that led down to the front of the pizza shop, but it was always locked, and we mostly used that stairwell for just random storage anyway. So, when you would enter the apartment from the back door, atop the stairs from the outside, you would be in our dining room. To the right of the dining room was my mother's room. The dining room connected right to the kitchen. No walls or dividers. Beyond the kitchen was the living room, and past the living room was a hallway that led to mine and my brother's and sister's bedrooms. I note again that there were not a lot of windows in the apartment. We had three in the dining room, one in my mother's room, and my sister's room had one too. The kitchen, the living room, the hallway, and my bedroom that I shared with my brothers, they had no windows at all. If you were standing at the back door, in the dining room, you could see straight through to the kitchen, into the living room, and into the hallway that led to the bedrooms. The bathroom was off of the living room, but it's not really important to the story. Also didn't have any windows in it too. So, now to the actual story. So I woke up from a nap in my mother's room. It was around 11pm because I saw the time on my mother's AM radio, and when I went into the dining room, the 11 o'clock news was on as well. I called out to my mother and siblings. There was no answer. I walked to the back door and I looked out to see my stepfather working in the family car. I turned around and through the dining room, the kitchen and the living room, I could see a light coming from the hallway that led to the bedrooms. The hallway had a high ceiling so I could immediately tell that it wasn't the hallway on because the light looked more like something glowing in the hallway. I started to walk towards the hallway and I made it into the kitchen when I see my sister come out of the hallway and now that I see her, she's sort of glowing. She's wearing this nightgown that she usually wore to bed, but she was like 100% glowing. I thought that maybe she had a, a torch under her gown or something. I called out to her, but she didn't reply. She just tilted her head to the side and... I approached more and she was now standing in the doorway of the kitchen living room. She never moved from the doorway of the hallway or the living room. I couldn't see below her knees at the time because the doorways weren't exactly across from each other and the angle that she was at, her lower half was behind the edge of the couch. I said something else to her, at this point annoyed that she was acting weird, and I walked into the living room. Again, she said nothing and just tilted her head. Then she started to back up into the hallway and motioned with her finger for me to follow. So I did. She gets a few feet into the hallway, 
still motioning for me to follow and, you know, glowing and all that. I got around maybe eight, nine feet away from her and could now see her lower half. And I still can't make sense of this, but she had no legs and was just floating. The bottom of her nightgown flowed around with no resistance, hitting nothing because her legs were not there. She kept motioning for me to follow, but at this point, I was hurriedly backing up and lost sight of her as I reached the doorway of the living room sort of kitchen area. The glow from her completely disappeared when I lost sight of her. It didn't just fade, mind you. It was just like it blinked and it was gone. And the instant the glow was gone, I heard the familiar bang of the metal back door of the pizza shop on the first floor, slamming closed, and I ran to check the back door of the apartment on the second floor to look out, and there I see my mother, my younger brother, and my older sister, who was in completely different clothing. I was stunned. I have no idea what I saw that day. I didn't go back into that hallway or my bedroom for at least a week as well. I told my family about this, and they all have no explanation too. My sister is still alive to this day. I really don't know if it was a ghost or demon or what. But whatever it was, it completely freaked me out and changed my perspective on everything. A couple of things to mention too was that I was 1000% awake. I don't think I was hallucinating. I never saw whatever it was again and as far as I know, nobody else saw it either. I've had other paranormal things happen to me, but not in that apartment, and not that blatant. Random things at the house my dad and my stepmother had, but yeah, it paled in comparison to this. So, that's my story, and I still don't know what to think about it. Any thoughts or opinions or anything that you would like to share would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. So I was leaving the gym the other afternoon and was awkwardly sort of exiting behind a middle-aged man. He was pretty well dressed to be exiting a gym, but he held the door open for me, then began keeping pace with me when I headed toward the direction of my car that it was parked in. He began talking to me, just sort of politely at first, and I realized that he had a strong accent, like a European one. I'm pretty bad with recognizing the specific ones, but... He quickly changed the conversation from normal small talk to asking me if I was single. I was flattered, but I quickly said no, and I tried to speed up. But he kept pace with me. He seemed, I don't know, upset by this, and moved a little closer to my side as we walked through the parking lot. Would you leave him for me? You're beautiful. I could take good care of you, he said. I know I made a face, because... He grinned like he knew that I was uncomfortable, but was also sort of excited by it. I said to him, I'm in a happy relationship, thanks. I deadpanned seeing that my car was just four more spaces down, and considered running for it. There was also no one else in the parking lot but us. Would you give me your number? He was already taking out his phone. I'll text you so you'll have mine, in, in case you change your mind. Um, no thank you, I quickly said. If you'll excuse me, I sped up again and thankfully he stopped at the car one pace before where I was parked. I sort of half jogged to my car, risking a glance back toward him. He was watching me intently. My gut told me that he was waiting to figure out which car was mine. But as I unlocked the door, I saw him start speed walking toward me. Sped up by fear now, I jumped into my car and immediately locked the doors. I quickly turned my key and threw my car into reverse as... He suddenly was at my door. Without even checking what was behind me, I hit the gas and pulled out of the space. And when I did, I saw him pull his phone back out and seemingly take a picture as I accelerated away from him. I was shaking with fear as I pulled out of the parking lot. I didn't have any pepper spray and I didn't have a weapon on me either. To be honest, I don't know what he would have done if he had reached me before I could lock my door, but... I'm afraid that he got a picture of my license plate or something. I don't know what he was doing. Part of me thinks that maybe this was a, 
a trafficking attempt or something, or maybe he was just a creep. Either way, I won't be going back to that gym anytime soon, that's for sure. So I've been debating about sharing this story with anyone outside of my small circle of people that were there, but I want to share my experience in hopes that it saves someone's life or to give understanding of what someone else has experienced at the very least. So late fall 2010, in northern Canada, I went deep into the wilderness with my father and my eldest brother to hunt for moose. We left early in the morning, just before sunrise, trying to cover as much distance as possible before nightfall. We traveled winding rivers and had to repeatedly portage over rapids all day. But we decided to set up camp just after halfway to our destination. My father figured that we'd make the rest of the journey tomorrow. And well, when everyone bedded down for the night, I decided to go and grab some firewood and relieve myself down by the bank of the river, just out of reach of the light from the campfire. Out from the tree line, about 15 yards away, all of a sudden I could hear rustling in the bushes. I watched the area where I heard the noise and focused on that spot. All of a sudden too, I felt kind of funny, sort of dizzy or lightheaded, and I could smell this putrid stink, like old milk or rotten food. Then I saw the tree start to sort of, I don't know, morph and move ever so slightly and began to take the shape of a a head and slight facial features. My eyes began to adjust to the darkness and along the tree line I could hear this voice coming from there. I recognized the voice. It sounded like one of my relatives who had recently passed away. The face took the shape of my relative too. They said, hello, I've missed you. Come and see me. I smiled and I stepped forward a bit but stopped to analyze the situation. My relative's face stopped smiling and became sort of emotionless. The skin began to turn pale and suddenly peeled away. Chunks of flesh from their cheeks began to fall away and I felt shock and fear overwhelm my body. I couldn't make sense of any of this so I started to back away and make my way back to camp. I didn't realize at the time that I'd been walking towards the voice and I was further away from the firelight than I thought I was. The voice became angry and began shouting at me to come here, so I turned to run away, but as I looked back one more time, I saw the most disgusting thing that I've ever seen. It was rotting flesh on just gnawed bone, caved in eyes and a hollow chest cavity. This humanoid creature was tall and super thin. At that, I ran as fast as I could, trying to yell for help, but the fear had made my voice quiet and raspy. I ran along the riverbank, and I could hear the heavy breaths and the stomping feet from this thing right behind me. I made it onto the top of the riverbank, but it grabbed a hold of my leg as I jumped up. I gripped and tore the grass, trying to lift myself and yelled as loud as I could. Then finally my voice came back, and I yelled that someone has my leg. My brother woke up and ran over to where I was, then he pulled me up and took me over to the fire. I was terrified, trying to explain what I saw and that it looked like my relative, but not. I was trying to convince them that I wasn't seeing things, but my brother nodded his head and said, I saw it too, I know. That solidified it. He acknowledged that it was real, and he must have seen it when he was grabbing me. We stayed up all night after that too, rifles loaded and close by. We packed up when the sun was coming up and... We just went back home. We haven't shared that story with anyone out of fear of being labeled as crazy or liars. I know, it sounds unbelievable. I've had nightmares and I couldn't sleep for months afterwards. I would see these things, dark figures looking into my window or hear whispers when I was walking home at night. Eventually, I began seeing this dark figure daily. In desperation after trying to figure this out, I eventually went to medicine men or a shaman for help, but I've learned that the ceremonies only relieve it temporarily, I think. Friends have given me everything from protection pouches to crystals to you name it. I found out that there's a strong possibility that what I encountered may have been a wendigo. I learned that 
If you encounter one and survive, it attaches itself to you like a parasite. I've learned that it could only do this if it touches you, which it did. Ever since that night, I've been on edge when I enter into any forest or wooded area, which sucks because I really love being outdoors, hunting and in nature. But now, I always feel like I need to keep my back against something when I'm out in the wild, which is really frightening. Anyways, make your own conclusions about this. I've paid a price for being an ignorant child to the stories of old. As unbelievable as they may sound, some of them, I know for a fact now that they're real. I can definitely attest to that. So I've lived in the same house for nearly 20 years now. My family has always said that they've seen or heard things, but I never really did. That was until about one and a half years ago. I was home alone, walking through to take a shower, and I heard three loud knocks. I went to the door, and there was no one there. So I go to jump in the shower, and right as I put the shampoo in, there were three slamming knocks on the bathroom door, like they were the police or something. I said, yeah, I'm in here, thinking that my family had come back. Then I heard my name, Mark. I said, what? Then I hear, he's already here. Who's already here, I said. And no reply. I finish, I get up uh, out of the shower, and the house is completely empty. I call my family to see if maybe they left again, and they were still at the mall, and they hadn't come home. I tell them what happened, and... They say it happens to them all the time, and I just didn't believe them. So, cut to a few weeks later, now I should tell you that I sleep in complete darkness, so I start waking up at like 3.33 every night with a feeling of dread and being watched. But when I open my eyes, even though it's pitch black, I can see a shadow right beside my bed, and its head, if that's what you would call it, reaches to the ceiling, and I can feel it staring at me. I reach over and turn on the light, and when I do, it's gone, and the feeling of dread vanishes. This goes on for months to the point that I actually get used to it and ignore it altogether and just roll over and go back to sleep. Then, I start hearing things moving around in my room in the dark, things being stepped on. I could hear what sounds like someone sitting down on my couch because you can hear the springs compressing and the feelings of dread return. So I start sleeping with my fan on full burst, so that's all I can hear. But again, it gets worse. I wake up at 3.33 as always. Dread overcomes me as I feel someone actually sit on the edge of my bed. At that, I jump out of bed and turn the light on, but when I do, as always, there's nothing there. At this point though, I've had enough and I needed to take control. So, a few days later, I was alone sitting in the living room watching Netflix and I hear what sounds like someone running down the hall and then three knocks on my bedroom door. I know this sounds crazy, but I stood up and yelled, This is my house. Show yourself. I'm tired of you messing with me while I'm sleeping. I hear nothing. What are you afraid of? Come out, I say. Still nothing. That's when I think I really messed up though. I screamed, You're just scared. You won't do anything to me because you can't do anything. This is my house. And some other stuff that I don't really remember. But that was when it got way worse. That night, I was sleeping and right beside my bed, there were three booming hard knocks and someone screaming, Wake up. I jump up and run out to see what's wrong and... Everybody's asleep. I look at the clock and it's 3.35, so I start walking back to my room and I actually see a head pop out from the top of my door, like someone is hanging upside down. No features, just darkness. I freeze. The paralyzing fear I felt is giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. It stays there for 20 to 30 seconds, then slowly goes back up out of sight. I wasn't going back in there that night after seeing that. 
I go to my living room and I sit on the couch with all the lights on. Then I hear a crash in my room, then I hear faint laughing and then silence. When the sun finally came up because I didn't sleep at all, I went back to see what that crash was and everything on my nightstand had been thrown down and was laying on the other side of the room. There were handprints where I had seen that face that had a greenish sort of glow to them. For the next month I was tormented almost nightly with shadows that seemed to be running towards me and then would vanish. Doors slamming behind me closing into a closet or basement. That really scared me too. Things would randomly disappear and then days or weeks later reappear in the middle of my bedroom floor. People were calling my name. Knocks all day and night. After a month of it getting worse and worse, I talked to someone who was into the paranormal things like this and they said that I needed to stop talking to it because I'm feeding it energy and it's getting stronger the more attention that I give it. So I just started acting like it didn't exist. And to my surprise, things have actually calmed down, but it's been over a year since it started and I still wake up all the time at either 3.33 or 3.35 and feel someone looking at me or someone sitting on my bed or walking down the hallway, but I ignore it these days and just roll over, cover every bit of my body except the top of my head and ignore it and go back to sleep. The knocks, they still happen all the time while I'm taking a shower and I'll hear hey or mark as I'm walking to the kitchen. I wanted to get a camera and put it in my room to see what happens, but to be honest, I'm kind of afraid of what I might see. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, literally. Cornfields and cows with the occasional sprinkling of houses filled with people who tended to the cornfields and cows is where I grew up. So, as any teenager in the country would do, I spent a lot of time exploring abandoned buildings. Houses, barns, restaurants, anything that I could manage to get into. I had just gotten a new job in a town as well that I didn't usually go to, and of course, immediately asked the locals about the scary stories in the town. I was told over and over again a story from the 80s of a woman who caught her husband cheating and came home one day and blew his brains out while he was asleep apparently. She then went on to end her own life behind the house. According to the local legend, the police never even cleaned the crime scene up. They removed their bodies, but there were many pieces of the husband left behind on the floors and the walls. Immediately, I was pretty interested in this. I asked where the house was and was surprised to learn that it was only 10 minutes away from where I was working. Now, don't get me wrong... I felt brave, but as a young female, I wasn't about to explore this haunted murder house by myself. I texted some friends of mine the road that it was on and asked them to meet me there that night. They of course had nothing else to do, so they agreed. I got off work at around 10pm and met my friends in the front of the house. It was a small white farmhouse, heavily overgrown with weeds and barely visible from the road. I had no idea how we were going to get into it, but I knew that I had to see what was inside. Me and my three friends, two guys and one girl, looked all around and saw my one guy friend found a window that wasn't locked. He was far too large to crawl through, so my smaller guy friend crawled through and unlocked the back door. We climbed through the weeds and we made our way into the house. By the light of our flashlights, we began to explore and the house seemed pretty much untouched. There were dishes in the sink and old boxes of food in the cabinets. The walls were a mixture of yellow from long-term smoking and patches of brown, which could have been mold or could have been pieces of, well, the husband, who knows. But I wasn't about to touch it. My guy friends took off into the bedroom and my girlfriend and I looked for the basement. After some searching, we found the steps to the basement. It was a dark and cave-like unfinished basement with lights dangling from the ceiling that most likely hadn't been turned on in like decades. But the basement had two sections. The first one that you were immediately in was a laundry or sort of washroom. Then behind that was an open storage room. And this is where things started to really turn. You see, we walked into the storage room and 
We were met by a giant red painted pentagram on the floor. There were shelves all over the walls filled with what appeared to be jars of dead animal parts and blood. There were half-burned candles, upside-down crosses, and notebooks that were falling apart from years of moisture and mold in the air. Suffice it to say, we were pretty creeped out by this. It wasn't until a bit later, too, that I understood what I had saw, but at the time I didn't know much about the rituals that they were most likely performing in this basement. I have no way of knowing if the husband and the wife had done this, or if it had been done by other fellow trespassers, but... It didn't seem to be very recent. In any case, we decided that we'd had enough of the creepy basement at this point, and we head upstairs, only to be greeted by the loud sound of shattering glass. But one of my guy friends had decided to grab a bat from his car and bust out the old TV. We both screamed at him to stop. I mean, yes, I definitely trespassed, but I was never a vandalizer. After taking a few more swings, he stops though, and... Instead of turning around to yell at me, he starts staring out the kitchen window behind me and his face looked absolutely terrified. Thinking that he was messing with me, I, I tell him to stop being weird and we needed to leave before the cops came and saw this mess. At this time, my friend shifts his gaze from the window and looks at me. He points back to the window and says, what is that? I sort of laugh, again thinking that he's messing with me, but he doesn't laugh. Finally, I turn around and I also see movement in the field behind us, slowly getting closer and closer to the house. We all stand at the window waiting for whatever it is to come out of the field and into the open part of the backyard. A few seconds go by before we see a woman in a long grey nightgown holding a brick in her hand running towards the back window. At this point, she was mere feet away and we all ducked down below the window thinking that she was going to throw the brick through it and we needed to try and avoid the shards of glass. And she did. The window shattered so loud my ears started to ring but I didn't feel any glass. After a few seconds, we all stood up and looked through the hole where the window once was. The woman, she was gone. And the glass that was shattered from the window was outside on the lawn. I still don't know how this is possible, but she threw the brick at the window. The brick was laying inside on the floor, but the window, the glass, it was broken and outside instead of inside. We all shared a collective, man, to heck with this, and ran out of the house and back to our cars. We spoke about it a few times after, but never to anyone else since... We were convinced that they wouldn't believe us. The house has since been torn down and the lot is now an extension of the field from behind it. And to this day, I don't know exactly what we saw that night, but I know that I'm certainly glad that the house is no longer there. So, for some background on my family and whatnot, I'm a 27-year-old female and married to my husband who is 31, and we have two children. Their names are Isaac, he's 8 and male, and he's from my first marriage, and Tiana with my now husband who's 5 and female. So, this whole situation started somewhere around May of 2022 when me and Isaac were at the local park just doing our own thing. My son was just playing with some other child at the monkey bars when I saw this woman approach me. She had red hair, I'm pretty sure it was natural, and her face seemed tear-stained. I became concerned as I thought that she was crying. I proceeded to ask her what was wrong, if she was alright, but she just kept staring at my son. The more she looked at him too, the more she sobbed. Then, all of a sudden, she sprints to him running and screaming Michael. She kept calling him that and it obviously freaked me out. I mean, she was running to my kid and calling him a different name. My son and the other child, they got scared and I approached them before she did as I was faster than her. I then screamed at her to get lost but she just stood there as I held my son and she seemed pretty enraged. She then muttered some things but I couldn't hear her as she stomped away. The other child's father and I talked for a bit and 
He seemed alarmed by what happened too. He predicted that she was probably a, a grieving mother and that my son looked like the child that she lost. I was still disturbed and so I took my son home. Since then, I've been a bit afraid to take any of my children to any public areas despite my husband's reassurance. But skip to June 2nd of 2022, I get a call from my school stating that a woman, who was a new volunteer for lunch duty, kept mentioning that my son was her Mikey bear and that she's been looking for him for years. They told me that another volunteer who had been working with her reported this. Obviously, this scared me, and I acted immediately by signing my kids out for the day. When I called the school the next day, I was informed that she was no longer there, so I was pretty freaked out. But skip to July 13th of 2022. It was Tiana's fifth birthday, and we decided to host it at a park in my in-law's hometown. Everything went well, although I was pretty paranoid. It was somewhere around 9pm when we began sort of tidying up and as I looked at many oak trees behind us, I could have sworn that I saw her again. I screamed at the top of my lungs and started chasing after her but she somehow got away. Ever since then I haven't seen her but I feel that this is just not the end of it. At this point, I'm seriously considering homeschooling my children because of everything that's happened, but I don't know, what do you guys think that I should do? I moved into this place a couple of months ago with my parents. We also have a dog. And a couple of weeks after we moved in, I tried to open the attic door. There's no ladder just with a broom as it was almost opened anyway and it sort of halfway dropped but seemed like it was being, I don't know, held up by something. I didn't bother and thought that it just could have been stuck there but two weeks later I go back to look at the attic and the door is in the spot that it was originally in. Weird I thought. A month or so later, my dog usually doesn't have problems with me and my family leave the house but... Now she does. She will hide under tables and start to panic, etc. And at night, I, I usually hear footsteps and loud bangs sometimes. My parents are deep sleepers and they don't wake up during the night, so I know it's not them. But when I wake up and go to check out the loud bangs, nothing has fallen. I don't know if I'm going crazy or if I'm just nervous about this new house, but... I went all around my house checking any closets and crawl spaces. Didn't find anything. After that, I went to try and open the attic door, but it seems like it had been boarded up, like shut from the inside or something. And it could have been the old owners, but I think that there might be someone up in the attic at this point. Anyway, I call the police eventually, and they send officers up there to check it out. And I couldn't believe it. The police, they found a sleeping bag and a ton of boxes full of stuff. No people, mind you, but still. I'm thinking it could have been one of the old owner's stuff, or at some point there was maybe someone up in the attic. I'm really shocked but comforted that there was nobody currently in my attic. My parents and I are going to board it up, just to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again, but man, it's just crazy. My boyfriend, 23 and male, and I, 23 and female, recently decided that we wanted to take the new tent that we bought on its first trip. The tent was one that hooks up to your car to provide more storage space, and we were excited to try it out. We had planned a, a kayaking trip the next day at a kayak rental shop. It was supposed to be a nice, inexpensive, outdoorsy weekend getaway. But we tend to book things last minute, so all the state parks and professional campgrounds were full. This led us to a website that is essentially an Airbnb for campsites. The place that we chose was a 100 acre property just 20 minutes south of the kayak shop. Of all the sites in the area, it was described as having working bathrooms, showers, it allowed for campfires and all the sites were car accessible, important for a car dependent tent. This site was also the most reviewed in the area with three 5 out of 5 star reviews. But the area was very rural so 
We didn't think much about the lower number of reviews for any of the campsites. The renter was Mary, who only ever texted us updates, but seemed sweet enough. Anyway, we start out our two-hour drive a bit later than anticipated, which put us behind the 11am time that we originally informed the host, but we tried to keep her updated with the new schedule. She just told us that to let her know when we arrive at the address that she sent us. We arrive to the address, and we're greeted with the barn from the pictures. It had string lights lit up all over it, seemed fairly new, and just gave a nice feel to it. We sit in the car for a minute, and struggle with cell service to text the host to let her know that we had arrived. Ten minutes after our text sends, a really sweaty man who appeared to be in his 60s pulls up in an ATV. He lets us know that he's the father-in-law to Mary, and she's busy taking care of the seasonal harvest and sent him instead or something. He lets us know that we can take the car anywhere on the property and offers to show us around on the ATV. My boyfriend, visibly uncomfortable, declines the offer though and asks a few more questions about the woods and how far into them we're allowed to take the car. Anywhere, he said. We can go anywhere. And the ATV man even offers to help pull my car out if it gets stuck. We ask one final question about cell service and he jokes that if we're from around here then we'll understand that reception works better on one side of the barn than the other. I am from around here and thought that it was funny but... Once he said that, I realized he didn't have any ounce of an accent for here like he should, which was odd to me. Eventually he leaves though, and we begin exploring the property on foot. The barn has all the lights on in the middle of the day, and it looks nice and maintained. It's insulated and has a working kitchen as well. The only warning that we got was to not drink the water, it seemed like a place that would host maybe a small 50 guest wedding or something. We walked past a shed out behind the barn to get to the trails that ran through the woods. After going through a hike that my car would have never survived, we decided that it might be best to just camp by a small creek. And we chose a spot on the side opposite of the barn. We were still within walking distance, but we used my car as a sort of buffer to feel a bit more isolated. We choose our spot... And then we go into the main town to eat and we walk around. We message Mary about the fire policy and she tells us that they'll deliver a fire into the barn for us to take to camp. Well, we arrive back at the barn about an hour and a half from night time. We drive by the barn and the lights have been turned off. But we assume that it was on a timer as to not waste energy or money. We also noticed the fire ring had not yet been delivered. Well, we start the grueling 30 minute setup in the sticky heat and... Reward ourselves with a sit in the air conditioned car. We notice that it looks like it's about to rain, so my boyfriend and I pull out our card game and wait for it to pass in the car. It only lasted about 10 minutes, but it is starting to be sunset at this point. The tent held up nicely, so we felt okay leaving it for a second. And needing to use the bathroom, we start walking to the barn. As we cross the creek, we then hear what sounds to be like someone in the shed behind the barn. They sound like they're moving things around, a, a bit unsettling, but I tell my boyfriend that maybe they used equipment today and it's just sitting in there making the cracking cool-off noise the equipment sometimes does. We get to the barn in any case and the lights are still off, but the fire ring is there. Well, we go in and check to make sure the power is off and it's not just the lights outside. None of the light switches will work so we assume that the power is cut. Again, though, maybe it's just on a timer or something. No worries. We step out of the barn and get 10 feet away, and we then hear a hum in the distance to the opposite side of the shed, and the power to the barn is suddenly restored. Maybe it's the weather. We change direction to use the bathroom, and as soon as we step inside... The power cuts and the hum stops. I don't know why, but at this I start to get a weird feeling and I can tell that he has it too. I look to my boyfriend and say, maybe they're just watching us. I immediately follow it up with, no, that's a lot worse. We walk back outside and the lights turn on. My boyfriend says that we probably should leave at this point and I have the same gut-wrenching primal fear 
We put the ring back by the barn since we had moved it ten feet, and the barn lights start flickering. We briskly walk back to the car. The 30 minute setup was torn down in like 5 minutes, and we jump in the car and we lock it. I managed to get my car going pretty quickly, thanking God that the rain did not get my car stuck. We start toward the driveway and just as we made it to the road, my boyfriend looks back and sees a man standing by the shed just watching us. As soon as my car pulls off onto the road, we get a text from Mary letting us know that the firing is out by the barn. She also informs us that we're welcome to stay in the barn if the rain had messed up our camping experience. We arrive at a nice hotel, willing to splurge for the safety. At this point, it's 10pm at the earliest. A sweet old lady checks us in, desperate for validation and just comfort from anyone. We tell her what had just happened to us at the campsite. She looks shocked. She asks us if we had seen the news lately, which we both respond that we hadn't. The lady tells us that couples in the state have been going missing, apparently. All of them had gone camping. Three couples were truly missing, and one was recently found on the side of a freeway, pretty much slashed and near death. They are, at the time of sharing this, still recovering in the hospital. We couldn't find any articles about where in the state, but the look on the lady's face suggested that it was probably somewhere near us. We get to our room and text Mary to tell her that we're not staying anymore. All they send is, thank you for staying with us. We lock the door to our hotel room and I just break down in tears. I will never forget that feeling that I got at the barn. The primal flight or fight feeling and the feeling of just being watched like that. I feel it in my throat just sharing this too. I never, ever want to experience anything like that again. So I grew up in the woods and have many stories about strange goings on. But this one happened a few weeks ago and I just thought that I should share it here because this seems like a good place to put it. So I had just left my mother's house and was driving back to mine down a back road that I've driven down many times before. I knew this road like the back of my hand and could drive down it with my eyes closed in reverse. No, I haven't actually done that, but you get the point. And as I was getting to the halfway point down this road, there was a thick fog, which is nothing new as there's fog on this road all the time. However, I was driving slowly and started taking turns. I really don't remember... There was a, a 90 degree right when it should have been a left, followed by a wide left turn that felt like a, a full circle. Then I drove straight for about 5 minutes with no hills or drops, and that road never has a flat section that long. But there was then a left hand turn up a hill, and as I was going up, all the hair suddenly stood up on my body, and I almost turned around, but I decided to keep going because... I really don't know why, to be honest. But this is when I pulled my gun from my glove box and I had it on my lap. But when I looked back to the road, some dude was just crouched in the middle of it. I slammed on my brakes and he didn't even flinch. I figured that it was just some dude going frog hunting or something, as many people on that road do just that. I honked my horn and the guy stood up, but he was massive. Like at least seven and a half feet tall, thin as anything, and his arms were just way too long. It also looked like he didn't have any clothes on either. I laid on the horn again and clicked off the safety on my pistol just in case. He turned his head in what seemed like almost a, a full 180 degree turn. And his eyes, they had a like predator glow, like a wolf or a cat, and... I raised my gun and leaned out the window telling him to get lost. He took a few steps toward me and I know that this was stupid but I tried to pull the trigger and my gun just didn't fire. The hammer clicked but there was no boom. At that I whipped the car around faster than I ever have done before. I then just flew down the road at at least 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. About 30 seconds after I turned around and I realized that all of a sudden I recognized all the turns and the hills again. 
I was driving down the road like I'd never taken that first right. I went back during the day and still don't know where I took a wrong turn. There are no side streets down that road that are paved and certainly no straightaway as long as the one that I drove. I also went to the range a day or two later and put that same round in the chamber and it fired, no problem. To this day, I really don't have any idea as to what happened. I also don't drive that way at night anymore. Please, tell me someone knows what I saw. None of my friends believe me and even my mother doesn't. But I know that I'm not crazy. I know that this happened. I'll give any extra details that you guys need, but please, if you know anything about what might have happened to me, then do let me know. The ghetto where I'm from is divided by a golf course. One side of the street is project housing and the other side is nicer homes built in the 30s to 90s before the projects were there. I lived in a 1934 two bedroom house, bright yellow tile. I was 26 and I lived with my girlfriend who was 24 at the time. After living there a few months, my girlfriend started saying that she felt uneasy in the hallway which was very small and had a crawl space in the ceiling. I brought my dad over to get up there and take a bit of a look because, you know, it could be something scary up there. But he found nothing, just insulation. Anyway, a while later I took a nap for about two hours. My girlfriend in the next room was folding laundry after work. She comes to wake me up, shaking my shoulder. She asks how long I had been asleep for. I said a couple of hours. And she said, so you didn't just walk through the house? I said, no. She said, but I just saw you walk through the hallway. I, are you sure? Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. Plus, there's nobody else in the house. Fast forward a year, I'm trying to quit smoking and I lost my vape at some point. My buddy had been staying at my house for a couple of weeks He's helping me look for my vape. I walk out to the car and get into the driver's seat. I'm sort of digging between the seat and the gear shift. When suddenly, something or someone is talking right in my ear. Not whispering, right in my left ear. It said, there's that SOB right there. I'm frozen. It's the dead of night. No one around. But my buddy is still inside. I finally, after about a minute of complete silence open the car door and I go back inside. I tell him what just happened and that's when he said, probably the same person that calls my name at night. Apparently, he's been hearing someone say his name from behind him on the couch that he slept on at night. I'm creeped out by that but not enough to move. I mean, the rent was great and I was not easily shaken either. Fast forward a few months though, my mum comes over to pick me up to go shopping. I throw on a shirt in front of the hallway and say, Hey, how's this for today? My mum turned around and her eyes go over my head. She starts to back up and tries to adjust her eyes. I said, What? She said, A black shadow just went up the wall behind you and into that room. And I remember thinking at the time, Oh, so there's now that too. Fast forward to a few months later, I'm watching TV in the living room with my buddy when we hear a loud bang and we go into our kitchen and all the cabinets are open. There was also a single jar of Nutella on the floor and a huge punch hole in the wall beside the refrigerator. That one was definitely interesting for a lack of a better term, but I'm still not leaving. Fast forward a few more months, my buddy moved out, my girlfriend and I have broken up and she moved. I was living there alone for the first time. I go to lay down one night and my bed was freshly made so the covers were tight. I cut the light off and I laid my head back when suddenly there was pressure on each side of my feet like something has one hand beside each side of my feet and was pressing down as if to look over top of me or something. It lasted all of 30 seconds before I sat up and I cut the light on again. But when I did... There was nothing there. Still though, I refused to move at this point. 
Fast forward again somewhat, I get a new girlfriend, she starts sleeping over, says that she sees faces in the mirror in the hallway. I'm like, yeah, weird things happen here. Nothing has ever tried to harm me, so I stay. This goes on for a couple of months until one day I come home to my girlfriend on the porch. It's dark and she says that she refuses to go back into the house while I'm gone. She convinces me to move at this point. I'm in love as well. I wanted her to be comfortable. We're in our new house and I'm on my laptop one day going through old photos and videos taken at the old haunted house. And I find videos of myself being recorded from my laptop but I'm not pressing record and I don't remember anyone taking these. It was videos of me watching TV, working out, leaving my bedroom and walking through the house. It stops on its own. All the videos were about a minute or so long, but it was really weird. After this too, I went to the courthouse and found records where the owner and also the town sheriff had apparently died there of old age. And the community seems to believe too that there was a brothel there at some point due to a red light on the porch or something. I'm sure that that was just a rumor, but one of the neighbors said that someone had actually shot themselves in that house but apparently there was no record of it. I could just go on and on too about other instances in that old house, but I've gone on long enough. It was 2009 to 2013. The rent was good, and to be honest, I kind of wish that I had never left. Anyway, all the events in that house are definitely something that I'm going to carry with me.